everybody! If it's Wednesday, it's Warhammer, and that must mean it's time for another episode of Warhammer Weekly. Joining me, as always, is my co-host for this week. It's Tyler. What's up, buddy? How you doing? <laughs> I am not sufficiently prepared and festive for this show. Got to do better next year. I That's looked, right. I scoured the entire house, could not find a Santa hat or whatever that beautiful thing on Tom's head. That I'm very jealous of that. I don't know what it is. Reindeer? He has uh, reindeer horns. Reindeer Thank you. Reindeer. And they're, they're diamond encrusted. You see that? Mm -hmm. oh, Glittery. Beautiful. <laughs> Only the finest, only the finest for Tom. Absolutely. We are, we're going to, This first of all, this is our, I suppose, Christmas show. It's only a couple of days after. This is the one closest to Christmas. This is where we celebrate. And at the same time, we're also going to talk about 2024 next year. It's right in between. So that magical week, one of my favorite weeks of the whole year, the week in between Christmas and New Year's, basically a week where no one expects anything of anyone else in the world. This is the appropriate thing. It's one of the best things about this part of the year. So... Yeah. Uh, we're going to go ahead and, and talk and about Const next year. Uh, Constantinos is not here, so I can be positive and cheery, yeah. which I'm very excited about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Only when he's around, do you need to really get negative? Yeah. Uh, so we're going to be talking about our 2024 predictions, uh, later on in the show. But of course, first we start off the show as always with the news. All of you out there, by the way, who are watching, welcome. I hope you had a wonderful holiday. If you celebrate, if you don't, I just hope you had a wonderful, uh, Monday. Either way, I hope it was great. What do we got for news? We got some preview images, sir. They released a little teaser video, a bunch of silhouettes today. Uh -huh. Looks like you've got these images ready to go. I do. They're teed up. Yep. So this is, uh, this is like one of two of Callus and Toll, who are both getting models. Like that's who this yep. is. Yep. Okay. Yep. That is exactly what's happening here. Correct. That's what this is. You can see his little top knot, and he has his sword like this, and guns and stuff. And we'll see his partner later on. Uh, so that's that one. Then we have a new Chaos Marauder horseman. Uh, yeah. Which is, which is exciting. Um, because that is like a very old kit hiding out in the Chaos line. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, potentially a Warcry kit. Uh, this Marauder Horseman, I would say, but we'll see. Could just be one guy. Might not be a whole kit. Uh, because it might go with... Uh, sorry. But but maybe not. Maybe it's just a brand new kit. Because at the same time, it, this we've got a, a little Lumineth person here. This is only part of it. Yep. We have a, a Lumineth. Uh, and the Lumineth person is likely up against this person, which is a Night Haunt in a Warcry box. So probably because yep. we had heard rumors of a Night Haunt versus uh, Lumineth kit, and this guy's clearly Night Haunt. Like yeah. the most various obvious, the most very obvious image to anyone with eyeballs is this one. They'd have to really give be throwing us a left turn for this not to be Night Haunt. Yeah, the Seems general like lack a Karen, of legs. Karen Wraith update. Yeah. Maybe Seemingly. I mean I would assume Maybe. so. That that model yeah. is so old and so <laughs> like so boring like it literally looks like about four other models yeah mm. sure sure um so a lot of opportunities there to get that guy updated and then finally yes his callus and toll the other one here you go the other one so there's there's the the five images we got and realistically this is like the first two months of the year is what they're previewing here basically like a lot of this stuff, we'll just see the figs themselves either in the next couple of weeks or at mm -hmm. LVO. Yeah, um, when that's we what we did last year. Show. Like last year, we had um, uh, Seraphon, like a bunch of Seraphon reveals in the same video. Yep. Uh, Nicholas R. Or sorry, Average Joe. I apologize. Average Joe said, uh, "Where are all the Skaven? You're not going to see them yet, buddy, because that's for the middle of the year, and they're not going to start." basically like they'll, they'll sprinkle some stuff in rumor engines but yeah at adepticon is when you'll see the fourth edition launch box just like they announced the 40k one and that's when you'll see all the skaven fingers crossed hope amongst hope so at any rate claw, you wouldn't claws, expect to see anything claws crossed. yes yes exactly cross your claws um who are callus and toll um callus and toll are a pair of heroes who are sort of the uh, balcony Muppets of the uh, Mortal Realms in that they sit around and sort of make fun of everybody else. Uh, but realistically, they are a pair of heroes, a witch hunter and his warrior buddy. Uh, 
who are featured in a couple AOS novels and show up as side characters in many other things, uh, other stories throughout the realms. They are two characters who have proven very, very popular as sort of POV characters on uh, the nature of the mortal realms. They're the and AOS they, Felix, Felix and Gotrek. Yeah, sort of. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. They operate out of um, Hammer Hall mainly, but they, they get around. So Yeah. They were in Excelsius in uh, that one book that I read. Yes. The only OA, the only AOS novel I've ever read, City of sure. Secrets, I think, <laughs> or something. It was actually quite delightful. Yeah, they were in Excelsius, I think, until he got ruined, and now they're in Hammer Hall right now. And yeah, like they they get around. I mean, they're they're, you know, Mortal Realms travelers. They're not like attached to anything in particular. So but they're they're cities people, basically. More order of Azir are coming, folks. Yep. Yep. Uh, so there you go. That's all of that stuff. Um, I mean, it's all exciting. I'll like we're yeah. due a Warcry box set, so I assume that's with the Night Hunt versus LR, or sorry versus yeah LRLR, um, a Chaos Marauder kit. Hopefully, maybe as part of like a Dawnbringers book five, we'll talk about hopes around that a little later on. Mm -hmm. It could be just anything that's that's causing that though. At the same time, would that be all chaos, or what do you like? Or do you think some chaos in cities? Probably chaos in cities. I assume that's maybe also where Callus and Toll comes from. That, and that's what I was going to ask. Yeah, because they've been riven throughout. Death. Yeah, they've been riven throughout Dawnbringers for like yeah. a while. We're getting predominantly death in this next set, right? Like that's Correct. what the next book yeah. is. Yeah. 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 It's like death. All of it. <laughs> that's it's that's its thing. Yes. Yeah. Uh so uh where is all that stuff, by the by? Hopefully real soon is when we're gonna know. So anyways. Uh Nicholas R said, Darn, I was hoping we were to get uh the thumbnail was a gun cast mini. Look. I'd love Stormcast with guns, okay? Like, let's get into it. Give Stormcast tanks and heavy bolters. Let the let the apotheosis complete. All right, let's do this. Like, just give them miniguns. Everything's better with a minigun. Uh, so, there you go. Uh, I disagree, Robert McMillan. I, I just, I, I, it would be cool. It's not that I wouldn't love to see him, but I, th I think, I think we'll be operating in that space, but I, I really have my money on Skaven. Strong bet. Anywho... Although Stormcast, I agree completely. I think you're right there. I don't think we'll ever get a, uh, a launch box without Stormcast. It's just what it is. Yeah. Um. All right. Cool. What else we got? Old world release info. So I did not look into this. What uh -oh. do we got going on here? Oh, my launch goodness yeah. gracious. We've got launch so much boxes. information. Launch boxes. Ahoy. Choo-choo. <laughs> that's, that's not what boats make. Okay. So... Return to the world of legend. I'd really rather not, but let's do it anyways. Um, I do like this different time setting, by the way. Um, what I'm seeing in like the story and all that stuff is actually like they're focusing a lot on like the border princess part of the world, which was always mm. actually the most interesting part of the world to me. Um, so mm. I'm happy to see all of that. <clears throat> um, um, I'm here for, I guess we're back to just sort of low key European pseudo racism. So that's going to be a good time. Um, but the, you know, we got the boxes. So there's two, two, count them, two launch boxes. Okay. Um, now both contain the big book. We'll talk about the big book in a minute. But it's like, a, do you want the good guy launch box or the bad guy launch box? And allegedly this is supposed to be around uh, like 1,250 points or something like that, like in that space, who knows? I mean, you know, given that we've seen how things are built in this it's going to be like fantasy so like it's not like a unit is some guaranteed number of points like units can vary wildly on how many points they cost right like you could have a unit that's worth 80 points or 200 points depending on did you give them the additional weapon did you give them light armor yeah. heavy armor shields a champion a musician a standard bearer a magic standard does there you know like whatever right just all sorts mm. of crazy stuff Okay, so, like, you know, I don't, I don't know how many points are in any given thing. I don't, or, or how you can really say that, right? Yeah. But nonetheless, that's the basic concept. Uh, then we've got the details. Let's get them dates. Um, so here is the Tomb Kings of Kemri edition. I love that the two retired factions. Okay. 
are yeah. are the face of the old world. Are the face of the <laughs> relaunch. Yeah. Tom, is this a it's Morbin time situation? Okay. Let me explain. I mean Okay. For okay. everybody else. Let me make sure everybody gets what I'm saying here. Morbius was always a stupid comic book character. Scott is wrong. Okay? He was always dumb. And not that the Midnight Suns weren't cool. I was 12 years old once, too. I thought they were pretty awesome. All right? But uh, the Morbius movie came out. It was terrible. It flopped. It did nothing. Right? Okay. And then there's this whole, like, meme culture that comes out around it of it's Morbin time and then he morbs all over the place and all of this, right? Mm -hmm. It becomes, like, this trending thing on social media. Right? And then they're like, oh, people want to see the the Morbius movie after all. And so they put back out the they put Morbius back out in theaters and it yet again did nothing. <laughs> OK, <laughs> C.W. Kreiner said Morbius was the weakest part of the Midnight Suns. You're absolutely correct. That is this man speaks truth. Obviously, Morbius was the weakest part of the Midnight Suns. I mean, Ghost Rider rules. OK, at any rate. Um. So have they fallen for their own meme? That's the question I'm asking here. What do you think? No, I don't think so. Um, I think that they are cognizant of the fact that there was a lot of uh, blood and tears spilled around the cutting of these factions as we moved into AOS. Um, that there were a lot of loud stands I don't think it had anything to do with these two against each other, as per the meme. But I think that it, um, I think that they were the natural two that launch, like that would launch together. Um, that said, uh, I, like, it feels like a real miss. And what I mean by that is this. Of all the Tomb Kings models they could have put in that box. Yeah. Really? Really? Well, so this is like 93 models in this yep. box. 40 warriors, 32 yep. skeleton or skeleton, 32 archers, 16 horsemen, three chariots, and then new tomb king on foot and big guy on dumb croco dragon, okay? And the obviously the new models are the tomb king on foot and dumb croco dragon. Yep. Right. Yep. Okay. Yep. So you've got 91 models that were released. I went back and looked this up. And when this game comes out, they will officially be celebrating their 20th anniversary. How about that? It's almost to the... Theoretically, it could be almost to the week. I mean, I don't I don't know when this releases, right? I mean, they've yeah. said... They said check back in the new year and like, we're going to have a lot of information soon. So I'm, I'm just assuming this releases in January, yeah. right? Because they, the way they were saying it at the end of the article is like, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, coming real soon, right? So these guys will literally turn 20 years old the same month this game releases, which I do find serendipitous, like to the, to the, almost to the week. Mm. Uh, so yeah, I just like, no Tomb Guard, no Sphinx. Or Necro Sphinx. No uh, Stalkers or Ushabdi. Like, it just feels like such a miss. The most interesting Tomb Kings units there are out there. Yeah. Um, and, and by the way, on the secondary market, historically, those units that I just named were very, very expensive. Sure. These units mm -hmm. that you see in this box were worthless on the secondary market. Sure. Like, it just, yeah. it feels like such a mess. Sure. Okay. I dropped something on my desk. All right. <laughs> Tyler, what's your take on this? Do you, but like, let me ask this, though, Tyler. This yeah. is a pretty good army profile, if you look at this thing, yeah. right? Like, it's yeah. like it's a lot of infantry and stuff like that. It's, it's a good silhouette for the army. Like, this is a cool-looking force, admittedly. 100%. Yeah. Uh, I'm in yeah mode with, with all of this. <laughs> I don't have a lot of personal interest in the old world. I'm, I'm curious to read the rules 
and uh, be blown away by how complex of a game we played growing up compared to what we play now. And what we play now feels too nuts to me on the complexity side. Sure. Uh, which is which I find fascinating. Uh, yeah, just so. But yeah, I mean, that's a fair point. I, I don't, yeah. I, I mean, I think the design of all this, the, the marketing, the branding looks well done. I heard some controversy over how people were upset that the book was not in red color, which I found kind of funny. I don't know if that was just a meme going around or if that was something real. Oh, I don't know. Is that but, a thing? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I heard, I heard a few things about that uh, from some friends early in the week. But, ah, yeah, don't, don't have any strong opinions on this. I'm very excited for our buddy Tristan, though. Oh, indeed. Note. It's a great day for Tristan. So, I mean, hopefully yeah. we, I, I would assume that they'll put back out all the other kits you mentioned, Tom. Um, yeah. I would assume. Um, because yeah, otherwise, I mean, I like, hope. what a terrible miss. Yeah, I hope. Like, if it had had, let's say that it had had, like, I don't know, some smaller units of infantry in this, and that, like, that that had been, a number of those other units had been in this box, I probably would have bought this box. Just sure. for bits. Right? But because of, you know, for me wanting to do conversions and stuff like that. But what's in here? Nah. Yeah. Okay. Like, pass. Don't, don't worry. When tiles come out, Vince, Tom and I, regardless of anything that we say right now, we're going to be all in. On this, uh, you guys this, will. When this, they release this, the Hiles I mean, box. I, I still have Hiles. <laughs> like, I don't know what they have to offer me because I still have, like, 10,000 points of Hiles in my, in my closet downstairs. Which they I'm have probably to offer. Do. Here, here's an idea, Tom. New Hiles models. Yeah, that you're going to absolutely love, and you're going to buy them. Yes, they offer you yep. new high elf models. You give them money, <laughs> and then this, is the deal accepted? The answer will be yes. Um, all right, so here's the Bretonian side. Uh, so again, we've got uh, a bunch of peasants, which we saw the army construction for Bretonia in an article as well. So we know that actually you do need peasants in the standard army. Like you have to have peasants, not just knights. Um, mm. which is a change. It used to be very frequent. You would, you would not always, I mean, plenty of people ran peasants, but you would see lots of lists that were peasant lists. It would often be knights only. Um, Composition. Oh yeah, give it to me. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I look, I'm going to straight up say I do not hate the army composition rules that they shared in the article that were on offer. Um, I look All like, right. obviously we will do a full show dedicated to the old world when it actually releases and when yeah. we can talk about it. And, um, like, I'm not going to lie. I don't hate the army composition rules. I really don't. Like, percentages within additional number s sliders on there, right? Mm -hmm. Like, potential number sliders, mm -hmm. like one plus. So you got to have at least one or zero to one or zero to two or something, right? So it caps at one or two. Or then just any of these things. Go nuts, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, like, okay. That, that's actually quite a fine amount of control on, on those individual units. But here we've got 12 Knights of the Realm. You've got your peasants uh, of, of two varying types. You've got your three Peggy Peg Knights. Uh, I was looking, think... Tom, uh, by the way, and I still have so many Peg Knights. I realized how many Pegasus Knights I have, uh, un, un, just like unbuilt. It is frightening. Mm -hmm. I have a lot. Like, a lot. Um, like 18? Too many. I'm just going to say it that way, Tom. Too many. Okay. More than more than twenty? No, not more than twenty. Thank God. Okay. I don't have more than twenty unbuilt. Um, but and then this new th there's only one new model in this box, which is the Lord guy. So, okay. Yeah, it's so funny. I was at my local store and they had a metal tread in the like miscellaneous sure. models area, and I was like, mm, look at that. There's a tread. How cute. <laughs> Uh, I mean, these guys look good. I actually like this color scheme they're going for here, the sort of unified scheme, because it's a, like we're operating in a different time period where it's not, you know, sort of dukes from all over the realm sending their, their knights along into one congealed force. Instead, it's the individual barons and dukedoms and stuff like that. I, I honestly legitimately think the army looks a lot better with a unified sort of color scheme. I just think it looks cool. I've always liked this red and black. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. Looks great. So I love super cool. Dig all the new models. All the new models are amazing to me. Like all the new Bretonia that the new Bretonian models are really good. Really yeah. good. I'm sad that they have to sit alongside these again ancient models. I did not look up the years on the Knights of the Realm and the Peasants, but I believe they're about the same time period. Yeah. So. 
was pleasantly surprised. I don't know. To me, the men at arms and the bowmen look pretty good. I was kind of surprised by that. Knights, at least based on the photos, look a little derpy. Particularly, obviously, compared to the new guy. But yeah, the, the nice. problem is with the knights, you have a really direct comparison between yeah, a right. brand new, crisp, clean, sharp, you know, modern sculpt, and then the old, you know, one step advanced beyond Battle Masters plastics uh, sculpt. And yep, like that's rough, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, like if you every one of those knights that's in that picture, Tyler, if you turn mm-hmm. it up like this, there's nothing mm-hmm. underneath. Oh, the well, front. it's oh, just like oh, a yeah. it's like a Ken doll oh. down there just a smooth <laughs> plane of just yeah. like where these two giant pieces flit together fit together and don't have any no detail no shape no nothing oh. it just like it's just nothing it's you, you, you can't uh, yeah just like nah 90s 90s technology yeah uh, nice. um so that's fun uh okay I... Go ahead. I, I like this comment by Jamie Lang. I've got to scroll back up. I know we're getting a little He was talking about basically how with uh, with composition uh, here with the old world and fantasy, you are having to eat some veggies. Whereas with AOS, you can go straight to the ice cream, straight to the junk food. And that's that's your entire plate. There you go. You want all sharks? You want to be? <laughs> sure. You want an army of that nonsense and turning up pile in? Here you go. You want an army? Yeah. Obviously. Do you yes. think... Do you think that there might be a chance that there could be cross pollination on uh, on unit compositions like what we see in this for the new edition of AOS? We'll talk about it in uh, yeah in the upcoming section when we like that feels yeah. like a great item for our main topic. All right, let's keep moving. Uh, this is the book. It's a big book. But they say 325 pages. I don't have the notes in front of me, but I think it's 325 pages. It was a lot. And they said 70 pages of fluff. And I'm like, holy crap, that is not enough. Because that leaves 255 pages unaccounted for of rules. (laughs) That's too many pages of rules. This Um, is not an RPG. uh, That's a lot of rules. Okay, so... Yeah, it's a big book. Um, I don't know how we're going to do a show about this whenever this happens, but we're going to try. I don't know how to explain or make a presentation out of 250 pages in a book. I, I can't rules. do that. I well, can't do one that. One thing that you need to do is just do an entire, like, 20 slides on keywords. Yeah. On, on, on USRs. Yeah. Yes. Uh... Okay, uh, Peter Harrison said, "Who are they marketing this game for? Purely longtime players? Question mark doesn't interest me at all as a two-year player." My answer would be, I think it's. I'm not sure they could tell you who their persona really is, but if I had to answer the question, my answer would be they are targeting high complexity fantasy players, people who miss literally the old world, and, and- are. Everybody who played Total War. I don't mm-hmm. think so. I really, this is not the game I would make if you, the existence of the thing does not equal targeting a market. Okay. That's not how product sure. development works. Sure. Okay. If in, in Total War, the computer does like everything for you. Okay. If you're going to make a game to, to target video gamers, if you're trying to make a gateway game for video game players, this is the opposite of what you do. I mean, mm. the dead opposite. I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm just being serious. Like, people who only play video games and aren't used to, like, labyrinthine, Byzantine, tabletop rules are not going to have fun coming in and learning about the nature of complicated movement, flank, wheel, blah, blah, blah rules. Okay? That's just not yeah. the game. Yeah. All right? Like, I could write a game meant to target Total War players. It wouldn't look anything like a 250-page rule book. It would look like AOS 1. Yeah, like but, four but, pages. But with rank and flank. That's mm-hmm. it. No, I, I mean, I would have done... Uh, I, 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 I still think that the original vision that Jervis had, which was a 12-page rule set, was the correct thing. Like, he cut it from 12 to 4 by... 
senior executive mandate. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then very quickly it went back to 12. Mm -hmm. And if I was trying to write a game to bring in video gamers, I would write a 12, like a total, total war player specifically. I would, I would write a 12 page rank and flank rule set. It can be done. There are lots of good, really short rank and flank games out there. They exist. You don't need 250 pages for a rank and flank game. It's not required. Okay. So, no, I think they are, I think their persona in is like, whether they will this or not, like around the office, they might be saying, yeah, we're targeting total war players. And I, if I was in their product management team, I would cry BS immediately. Okay. As someone who does a lot of discussion about like persona targeting and marketing and stuff like that in my normal life. Um, so anyways, sorry, you got me off on a, on a rant there, but, uh, at any rate, that I think that's really the, the target. Okay. Um, so it's a big book. We'll see what we can do. That's cool. Uh, I mean, like, okay. Um, this I don't hate. This is sort of the army books. Uh, and, like, this is the army books. So you've got a good guy book and a bad guy book. And they, they form a little picture, which is fun. That's nice. I do really like the art. Like, all the new yeah. art I've seen is actually really good. They've, 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 they went out and got some, some really nice artists. And by that, I mean, they have good people working in the specialist studio side of the house doing the, the digital art. Uh, so you've got a good guy book and a bad guy book. I like the throwback with the name Ravening Hordes. I see you. I see you <laughs> trying to, to lure me back in by naming the bad guy book after the greatest supplement ever made in the history of Warhammer fantasy. Okay. Um, and these are like what you need to play the game. This is your armies and your army lists and how you build them. Okay. Your special rules, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. All right. And then you might think, great. Okay. I got two books, maybe core book, this book. They did say all these things will be available in EPUB. So I assume they're not going the direction of AOS since they don't have an app. So you'll actually just be able to buy EPUB PDFs, basically, which means these things will all be pirated in like five minutes after they're up. Yeah. Not to mention they'll be like a Wahapedia old world, whatever. Sure, of course. Yeah. But then you have these arcane journals and how they explained these were like softback supplements that give you like special characters and additional like support like unique magic items and special armies Mm. which i'm not against if it's executed correctly if i still have to carry around the normal book too completely and reference then like the core book and that book and this book to get my all of my rules together when i want to play one of those special armies that's kind of crappy if this book were to be like a replacement if i'm using this like if i'm let's say i'm using some special army out of here like what did they mention they mentioned like um the mortuary cult or something from the tomb kings book okay which i assume is like the priest one yeah Mm. so if if when i'm playing that i only need like this thing and the core thing then fine cool if it's just more if it's like all stacks on stacks then we're right back in the same place but i do love specialized armies because that's how you get back to not needing to necessarily have your your meat or vegetables or I don't know, whatever the stupid thing is. You got to eat your meat before you have your pudding or I don't know, whatever dumb analogy for food we're going to use. Um, the point is, is that like you could have special armies where it's like in this army, Decker Sphinx is her core. Go crazy. You know, like whatever or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, Yeah. Uh, yes, that is true. Keith Rogers said, Tomb Kings being armies of evil, nostalgia ruined. They were neutral like ogres. Good day, sir. Yeah, well, we flattened it out. We flattened it out. It's just good and bad now. Got rid of that neutral concept. No more gray. <laughs> so, uh, Matt P., one would hope the whole faction is in the supplement. I think they said that's not the case uh, in the article, but I guess we'll see. Uh, so there you go. That's all of that. And then finally, we had some new models for the Tomb Kings. We'll just look at them real quick here. Uh, guy with the big scroll. Okay. 
Cool. Seems fine. No issue. Uh, new battle standard bearer. Pretty ugly. Pretty awful. Uh, do not like that stance at all. That's like a really rough stance. Uh, I don't like the flag. Yeah, I don't like anything about this. I don't like how thick that is. Look at how thick that is. These little, this piece hanging down here. Rough. Uh, screen just caught up. Oh, yeah. That is a little weird. I like the first guy. This guy's a little weird. Yeah, first guy's fine. First guy's yeah. fine. He's not, like, amazing, but he's fine. This dude, yeah. mm, no. No, that's real bad. Mm. Uh, and then Tomb Swarms, and I also don't like these. I don't like the weird points and directions and stuff like that. Like, I get it. They were trying to do the swirly-twirly, nimbly-bimbly thing, but it doesn't sell for me. Yeah. So. Assumingly, by the way, all three of these are resin models. Sure. So. Okay. Those are, those are pretty funky looking. Yep. Uh, so there right. we go. I mean, okay. we'll see. Uh, More for the old world that, whenever we get it. Yeah. I think that's all our news. That was a long that, one. It was a long one, but we had much to talk about. <laughs> all right. Let's go to some pick of the week, gentlemen, shall we? Uh, yeah. Tyler, what do you want to share with everybody? All right, two quick ones. So, Miscast, the gentleman over there, got a, dropped a new episode today all about movement. Highly recommended. Lots of good Darren stories and, and from others. And then I watched one of my favorite TV shows now of the entire year on Netflix the other week. Uh, thankfully, it's been renewed for a second season. Okay. Blue Eye Samurai. Yeah, sure. Sure. Have you seen this? I have. It's amazing. Okay, good. All right, there's hope for you. Okay. <laughs> sure. Tom, have you seen it? I have not. Tom, I don't care what your opinion is of anime. You have to watch this. This show it's really is good. just phenomenal. Yeah. My right, wife everybody... and I... Go ahead. Yeah. No, go ahead. What were you going to say? Uh, my wife and I are binge watching Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso. Okay, we'll have to Ted. Yeah. Give this a go. It's amazing. Yeah, it's so if you liked, I mean, it's a female protagonist, revenge story, um, set in Edo era Japan, eight episodes. It's, yeah, it's just phenomenal. I could say more about it, but uh, yeah. Ben, got any thoughts on it? Blew me away. Uh, yeah, I mean, I do a whole episode on sort of ancillary fantasy, <laughs> uh, you know, media, right? That shows that this kind of stuff can can work. Like, how do we not have a Warhammer yeah. property when you you've got stuff like that going on and yet you can't get a warhammer thing off the ground is truly shocking to me when you look at something right. like that right um yeah. yeah it was great uh the for whom the bell tolls fight scene is a particular standout in my mind in the castle assault yeah. in episode i'm gonna say six probably um that's about so right yeah that was yeah. uh that's pretty great yeah i yep. liked i liked all of it i mean i Tom will tell you I am a huge, huge, huge super fan of the Edo period in Japan and have set nice. many games there and know the period very well and have read books and watched documentaries and all sorts of stuff like that. I'm a, I'm a big fan of that time period in Japan because yeah. uh, I'm a nerd. So anyways, there you go. There you go. Um, I what One of these years I'm going to go visit uh, Japan, but specifically I want to go to Kyoto I want to see the old, what's left of the the, the palace, and I want to head to the Seto Inland Sea. Mm -hmm. Those kinds of things. I, uh, that, that's the sort of stuff that I really want to see. Of which you get a good, you get like some good sort of reimaginations of those things as backgrounds in the uh, in that show. So, yeah. Yep, that's all I got. Uh, all right, Tom, what do you got for? Uh, I'm gonna spruik something that I've mentioned before, but not in a couple months. But I'm going to start with a story. Oh, boy. So okay. I'm ready. Last, last Settle week, in, everybody. Okay. We were, you know, Christmas was approaching. Yep. And I, I was notified by my, uh, like, technology that there was somebody at my front door. And it looked and the package had been dropped off. And I went, well, that's curious. What do you mean a package? Like, all, like, I'm not waiting on anything. Like, all of the Christmas gifts are here. Like, everything has been wrapped. What what is this mysterious package? Sure. Mm. And I go to my porch, and there's a box, and it has my name on it. And then I see it's from Hatchet. Friends, 
What? Hatchet, which is the publishing company that does Stormbringer. And so oh, I received yeah. my third month's Hatchet box. Oh, and let cool. me just tell you, I have never been so excited for a product mm -hmm. as I was for this binder. It's out of this world. I love it so much. It's ridiculous. And I know it like it tells you how the planes work. Weird. We've been wanting to know that for years. Sure. Um, oh, wow. And, uh, you know, like I I'll just say it again. I, I subscribed back in October when they first launched and like I've never regretted it. Every time I get a package from them, I'm like, this is amazing. You know, what's more mm -hmm. amazing in February on my birthday. I'm going to get uh, uh, Krondus, and I'm excited about that. Sure. That's coming. <laughs> um, That's so I say all that to say, if you all haven't checked out the Stormbringer subscription, um, like it is, uh, it's a, it's like a, it's a super interesting product. Um, mm -hmm. And if you're looking for models to paint, if you're looking to fill out a, some, a, some army storm, you know, like it has Stormcast and it has, uh, at like uh, Orc Warclans is the primary, but like I paid the three extra bucks a month to get the like the, the premium subscription. So like I'm gonna get Krondis, I'm gonna get another Maw Crusher, I'm gonna get uh, like some more KO, which I don't need, but I'm excited about. So it's some more trolls, some Trogoths. It's gonna be it's fantastic. Like folks, mm -hmm. if you ha seriously, if you haven't checked out the subscription, check it out. It's amazing. You said it's a really good deal too. Like in terms of it ends up being up. about fifty two percent retail, I think fifty two to fifty five percent retail, something like that. Um, now, like I don't need the GW paints, right? Mm. But I let my kids paint, so it's great. Uh, you know, it goes in their painting bucket. Sure. Um, yeah, it's it like it's it's a pretty good deal for what it is. Um, and again, like I originally did it for the models, but the actual like magazine is like super interesting. There's like a lore section in every book, and then there's like a how to paint huh. for those that are like getting into the hobby, um, which is pretty sweet. Um, like it's a it's way more in depth tutorial than most GW has ever sure, done. Sure, sure, sure. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, uh, it's it's a neat product. So for those, uh, and you can still get the subscription. And again, I'm not. There's no. I'm not getting any kickback. The show's not getting any kickback for this. <laughs> uh, yeah, like it's it's just because I simply love the product. Nice. Yeah, Tom, and, maybe with a link there's a bunch of terrain. I'll make sure it ends up in the description. Yeah, yeah, and there's a bunch of terrain that comes in in some of the issues as well. Yeah. Uh, just real quick, a little while back, somebody had said Vince's Tomb Kings hate continues. Listen, listen, listen what? here. Okay, who said? I don't remember who said it. Somebody said it. One. You're not wrong, and it's good for you to call me to the carpet on that one. Two, I love Tomb Kings. I have so many Tomb Kings. I have a huge Tomb King army, okay? Huge. And it's because I love them so much that I expect such quality. And when I don't see it, I'm going to call it out. That's number one. So I should be more clear. It doesn't live up to my expectations of what this thing could be. Uh, dumb Crocodragon just does not do it for me. Uh, I'm sorry. So there we go. Um, but new Tomb King on foot, guys. Fine. He looks good. Uh, okay. For myself, uh, my pick of the week, I'm going to direct everybody to the most recent episode of Tup, Trapped Under Plastic. Uh, the link is down in the description. It's all about VinceCon and the recent get together we had here at the beginning of December with uh, when the boy with the boys when they came up and uh, the projects and stuff that we worked on. So uh, it's great. John kind of recounts it from his point of view. Some fun stuff that happened. So check it out. Uh, it's a good time. Nice. All right. With that, gentlemen, let's turn to some uh, some hobby time. All right, Tyler, how goes the planning for the new year? It's almost the new Ooh. year. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I've gotten side, not sidetracked. I've been doing some terrain painting still. So I'm okay. still working no, on my counts. dry brushing. It's coming along. Yeah, it is it is good enough. It's actually better than good enough. I'm, I'm pretty excited about how it's coming together. So I'll have some photos at some point once I get some fully, fully finished. And let's see, what else is going on? I've been playing a bunch of Soul Blight. Uh, Tom, you and I apparently have been on the Soul Blight train. I think you got some games in too. Uh, uh, yeah, I've swapped over. I'm over on the FEC uh, train now. 
So oh, that's very. I, I realize <laughs> I realize that what I wanted to do with uh, with uh, Soul Blight is not possible, and so I'm I'm on the uh, I'm on the court, the, the delusional courts now. You had an interesting, yeah. We hadn't talked a little bit. You had an interesting alpha list mm-hmm. plan. Yeah, which yeah, which is fine. Uh, I just I would rather be more be more reliable, and uh, yeah, FEC can do that. So <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah. Very nice. So so Black's been a lot of fun. I, I did want to share. We're doing a lot of show and tell tonight. Uh, my fam surprised me with a amazing gift, feeding into my love of accessories, and so they got me guys this outstanding measurement set. You can see it wow. here. Wow. Yeah, I've been it looking at now. that one for a while. Yeah. It's on. It's on. <laughs> yeah. So th- apparently this is on Etsy. Uh, it came yep. from the UK. Tabletop upgrades something. Yeah, guys, this thing's amazing. <laughs> Does yeah, it like break magnetized? apart? Well, those are magnetized. Those are like magnetized. magnetized. It's magnetized yeah, into this. there. Yeah, and they they pop oh, right out. It's a tray, right and all the measurement yeah. stuff oh, pops right out. Okay, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, they're all acry- yeah. acrylic. Yeah, I, I was I was looking at it. I was looking. Yeah, uh, yeah. I got these uh, underneath. Yeah, there's a little indention where you can just pop it out. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, that is so super good. cool. So it's got a cover. Yeah. Anyway, had to show that. No, that's super neat. You should absolutely <laughs> send me like a link for that or something so I can post it down there after the show because that's super cool. I had no idea that even existed. And that's awesome. What a yeah. neat product. I like I like the measuring that it has this little storage holder thing too. Mm-hmm. And they all everything has a little spot. I like mm-hmm. things that are well organized where everything has a spot. Absolutely. Uh, very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Hit me with a link after the show. I'll drop it in. I'll yeah, drop in the show somebody. notes, everybody. Um, all right. For me, uh, I am as well painting some FEC. So I painted this little guy right here. Got my new Vargolf right. painted. Um, yeah. He was actually super fun. Um, this guy rules. Uh, he's like not too complicated at all, um, but he's a very expressive model. Uh, yeah, like I love this guy. This is such, this dude just nailed it. Um, there you go. You can see him a little better. There he is. So he's fine and he's good to go. Uh, all done with him. And then I'm also painting a bunch of these skeletons that came out in 2003. Uh, just suddenly mm. got the urge to paint a bunch of these skeletons. Weird. Um, yeah. These very old, already existing skeletons that I absolutely already had in my collection. They're just existing skeletons uh, mm. that are that, that came out back then. Yeah. Just, just yeah, got a lot, got just like you had your um, eighteen or however many uh, Pegasus Knights. You yeah, just you had other of, old, just models some old around. stock. I had a bunch of skeletons sitting around and thought to myself, I should paint a bunch of these. Yeah, makes um, sense. Yeah, of course, absolutely. So, uh, all right, um, so that's been my hobby time. Uh, that literally went right up to the show. I was getting those guys finished to like, mm. f- basically, I clicked over here and and was behind getting everything set up. Uh, all right. Um, so with that, do I get to talk about my hobby time? Oh yeah, go. Sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize, Tom. Go ahead. I'm so sorry, Tom. You go right. Thanks Vince. Well, you, you talked earlier and mentioned something about FEC and that got me confused because you interrupted Tyler's. Uh, I did. I just didn't talk about the hundreds of models on putting. Please go. So we want to hear about it. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm, Build models. No, no paint. No paint is going on any models yet. But I'm building models, and it's great. I love the FEC models. They're mm. delightful, and uh, yeah, you're right, Vince. They are. They are wonderfully beautiful models. Some of them are a, a, a pain to put together. Um, none of thing in the FEC box was really difficult. Um, but like I was doing the hair, the Herald from like Jerrion's. Yeah. The, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. That Herald Mar- was Mar- the, Mar- the Marrow Scroll was the worst. Sure. Like it was, if you've never put that together, my wife was like working on one and she's like, I, I can't do this. She's built hundreds of models at this point, And she's like, I, I can't do this one. It doesn't sure. work. Sure. <laughs> yeah. I, I like, legitimately the there's a bunch of them that are strange like the new vargolf of course is weird in how he goes together 
but it's just weird. It's not actually hard. Like, most of them, if you just literally go in order on the sprue, like, find yeah. piece one, attach it to piece two. Find piece three, attach it to that. Find piece four. Like, they're mostly built now, so they literally go in order on the sprue. Right? Like, part one and part two go together, then with part three, then four, then five, then six, then seven, then you're done. Right? Yeah. Um, so you can, mm -hmm. like, some of them are a little weird in how they fit, but they're but they're 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 actually just very straightforward and it's like one goes two goes three goes four done so yeah i hear that i feel that all right very good excellent okay now sorry tom now with that being said let's turn over to our main topic for tonight main topic time 2024 hopes and predictions okay but before that, I'm going to surprise these guys. There's a little thing that I didn't warn them about. But we're going to do it now. I'm going to put them on the spot. Here we go. Uh, here we are. Here we are. Boop. Overview. Then the surprise. We're going to look forward to 2024 and make some educated guesses. We're going to divide our guesses, gentlemen, into three types. Everything has to be one of these three types. It's either a sure thing. 50-50, or hopium. Okay? Yeah. When you're making a guess. Because this is the internet. There's no room for nuance. So either it's a sure thing, or it's just guaranteed. 50-50, which is what you say when you don't really know. And then hopium, when it's just pure chance. You're just, you're tinfoil hatting. You're shooting your shot out, and you're pointing out into left field. Okay? Yep. All right. Sure thing, 50-50, hopium. Those are, the, those are the dividing lines. Okay. And then 2024 promises to be a very big year for fantasy-based Warhammer. I mean, really, it will, because we're going to get, like, we know the old world's coming, and realistically, we know there's going to be an AOS 4.0. So this is our year, folks. Like, fantasy, mm -hmm. this is the year of fantasy. I really hope we get some... Uh, uh, I really hope we, we get some... Th th this is a year where we could really see some exciting things. So... Now, before we begin that, we're going to do a quick 2023 look back. And here's how we're going to do that. You ready? We're each going to say the best thing and the worst thing in AOS 2023. So you have to pick a best thing in AOS 2023 and a worst thing in AOS 2023. Okay? Uh, we're going to stick to products here. Okay, so don't name like an event or something like that. That that might very well be true, but we're going to talk about a product. What was the best product in your mind? What was the worst product in your mind? Okay. All right. There, have you gotten your items, gentlemen? Yep, done. Okay. Tom, right. you, you were quick off the stick. Start us out. Do I start with best or worst? Whatever. You can do both. Just you're both. Okay. Best. Uh, let's do worst. Worst general handbooks. Okay. Okay. Best war cry boxes. Okay. All right. You want to unpack that for me a little? Uh, yeah. Uh, one, the fact that I have to say general handbooks, plural. Let's start there. Um, because, uh, it, like, again we did this in the review of like the thank you or janky. Um, <clears throat> like I gave a very full description for why I'm so frustrated with the, the general's handbooks that dropped this year. Um, that sure. It feels like they failed on most levels. Uh, there were some good scenarios, right? Um, but other than that, uh, it feels like a lot of the, that the general's handbooks are just still way too heavy design wise. Okay. Um, uh, so that's why it's bad. Uh, good. The war cry, like war cry, in my opinion, is at its best when it has been the big boxes of terrain and two army, like every single time for me, like that's what, like it grips me every single box that released this year I purchased. Like I, mm -hmm. I purchased very little models this year, but when I started purchasing, I went back and bought every single one of those uh, um, terrain plus uh, troop boxes 
One, okay. because the models were just the best. Like, if you look in every single release, I don't know of almost a single model set that isn't better than it, than the most of the models in its actual model line. So, for example, like, if you look at Beast Flayers, look at Beast Flayers compared to how all of FEC was when that <clears throat> box dropped. It was the best models in that entire line. The same, okay. I would argue, is true of the, the Vampires. The Foot Vampires uh, in the 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 hunt uh the blood hunt uh the same with the claws of court uh uh karnak just all the way down the line uh the skinky chameleon skinks were better than all the rest of the like i would argue any of the other models in that whole line it came with little baby pterodactyls and a, a bunch of just beautiful sculpts of skinks um just every like at almost at every point what came out of those boxes the fire slayers the Fire Slayer models that came out of the, that box was simply better than all of the, the models in the Fire Slayer one. Okay. Yeah. Like it just it is it is it is greatness upon greatness that we're getting the fire the Warcry units. And actually, some of them are actually becoming competitive now. Some yep. of them are actually good units. They're not just throwaway, forgettable, you know, forgettable war. Perfect. Tyler, your best, your worst. Yeah, I had a quick question on the on that. Do you guys have any sense of whether there's a meaningful pattern or correlation between Warcry releases as a herald of future refreshes or expansions or priority new battle tomes with a slight expansion or whatever? Like nope. any, doesn't seem nope. to be any real correlation. I, I, really I think what clear. happened is, is I think the, the sculptors went wild. And yeah. when they walked through the design room, you know, when they walked through the sculpting room, they said that, 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 and that. <laughs> send it to production and, and we're gonna and we'll yeah. and we'll put it in work honestly and so then whenever yeah. the books get released right that stuff just gets lumped into the actual main product yep um yeah. i think that that's what you're seeing um and actually as an aside um what i would actually maybe argue that we're seeing is uh we're seeing war cry as as the venue of updating units with new units in aos sure and so mm -hmm. rather than new books coming with like a foot hero in a new box, you're just getting like heroes with the book launches. Mm -hmm. And then the units that would be in those book launches are getting pushed through Warcry first and then into the new book. Yeah, like your gorgers or whatever. Sure. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Very interesting. New terrain <laughs> units. Like that's true of yeah. both the uh both the Seraphon and the Ogre armies. Yeah. Yeah, good point. Okay, so I've got a death themed best and worst. So worst pre flesh eater courts, <laughs> pre flesh eater courts death. Uh, OBR. Uh, I'm 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 cheating a little bit because that's what I do on the show. D complete disaster. OBR soul blight. Those battle tomes, absolute hot mess. The both of them when they came out. Uh, to me, that was the worst of the year. That was like the culmination <laughs> of. One of the most jank years that we've had in the eight years of AOS's history with these battle tomes. Uh, they're in a better place now, thankfully. And then the best, I love this Flesh Eater Course book, as we just went over recently. And uh, the models, the box set's great. Yeah, there's a couple of potential concerns, things, but they're easily addressed if needed, as we discussed as well. So yeah, I think the Flesh Eater Course battle tome is, is pretty amazing. Really nice. excited for it. Tenicality. Uh, Slaves was also incredible. That was more, that was like split in half, right? That was like 2022 yeah, yeah, and 2023. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, obviously Slaves was incredible. Okay. Uh, best for me, easy. It's Big Pig and the Iron Jaws expansion. Even though in, in the game, the model rules are underwhelming, I couldn't be more thrilled that we got the thing finally after so many years yeah. of wanting it. And we didn't just get one version of it. We got three versions of it, which is awesome. So, like, there's actually lots of different ways, lots of different reasons to engage with Big Pig. And and just the Iron Jaws small refresh and expansion in general was something much needed to a, a wonderful, beautiful, very AOS line. Um, yeah. You know, so, but but Big Pig is the headliner there. If you, if you made me pick an absolute best, I'd pick him without hesitation. Um, it's just wonderful to see something that the entire community has wanted for so long, mm -hmm. a community of Iron Jaws players, at least I'll say, um, actually get manifest and like, yes, hey, this thing is here, right? There it is. Cool. We got it. Right, ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Uh, mm -hmm. And so that's that's easily the best for me. Uh, the worst. Um, well, since you said 
Soul Blight, that's fine. I'll leave that to the side. Uh, because I do think that was the worst of the year. I just think it was the most off-kilter book. But I'll pick the one I wanted to pick in my heart anyways, since you already got it out there. Uh, which mm. is the new Heat Knights of Slanesh book. Uh, the worst. <laughs> And that was this year. Somehow that's true. It feels like we've labored mm. under this Sisyphean stone for all of my life. I don't remember a time before it anymore. Uh, and I hate it. I hate it from top to bottom. It's the worst. It's uh, As far as like actual play experience goes, it's truly the worst time I've had all year. And mm. uh, nothing made me want to quit an army that I've loved for 20 years more than that book i've never had a book be that divergent from anything i would like to do with the army than that book it was mm. so wildly off kilter so there you go um that's my best and worst uh so i guess for one of my armies it was great it was the best of times right. for a different <laughs> one of my armies it was the worst of times ah uh, uh. indeed I played against a full army of pigs uh, about a month ago, and yeah, can confirm they need to work on momentum. Sure. Just need, needs a little tweaking. A little tweaking. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't quite yeah. get there. Doesn't quite get there. That's all right. Uh, that's all right. Okay. I'm still glad we have the model, because now that the model exists, the model yeah. exists. We can always get some new rules in the future, and that's fine. Right. right. Okay. Uh, I almost feel the exact opposite about Slanesh, by the way. Just on that, I'm like, man, I hate that they made so many dumb archer units. Because now we're going to be compelled to have dumb archer units be a focus in every book going forward. Right? Uh, uh, so, like, sometimes it's a curse to get new models. Take them back. I don't want them. Okay. All right. Now let's let's let us turn our gaze forward. And look into 2024, the year to come. And let's talk about the major things we see going on. The very first slide, I've got it here. That's right. You remember this picture. You know this picture. You love this picture. It was the herald of what was to be a new age when we saw this picture uh, of Lord Vandas Hammerhand and the prosecutors and the liberators when we were all like, what is this? I wow. saw this for the first time. Sitting at Hofbrau House in Kentucky, uh, coming mm. down to Tom's house to play a D&D &D marathon, myself and a couple of the people, we were there, and I was looking at my phone, and I that was, was like, the last was one. That was yeah. the last one that was at my house. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Mm. Almost a and, decade ago. Yep. And uh, and I saw this picture, and I was like, "Whoa, the world is changing. <laughs> like this is something <laughs> different." Okay. And, you know, new additions have rolled on as they do every three years. We've seen this pattern in both things. We know it's what they're going to do. So we assume, so sure thing, right? Let's just, let's just put that prediction out there. Sure thing, we're going to get an AOS 4 this year, right? Because, yep. uh, not because they care about three years, but because shareholder value says we're going to get a new edition. <laughs> okay. Have to appease Milton Friedman, Vince. Gotta do it. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, hey, thanks, AVS. I appreciate you dropping by to drop a like. Everyone else, be cool like AVS and hit like or something like that. Okay, by the way, as we're going through this, I want to know your predictions as well. So, let's just talk. We're going to just assume for this, this slide that the new edition is happening. Okay? So, what are our predictions for AOS 4.0? That's what we're going to go for here. We've they, they've they've gotten mm. so tight with the additions that now the game isn't predicting whether or not we get a new edition. The game is predicting what's in the new edition. Okay. I will start while you guys think. Okay. I am going to boldly put a flag down and say sure thing. Scave it in the launch box. There we go. I've Man, I've planted the flag. We we've been calling that for years. Like I the last that. like eighteen months, you can't I say that. that. I've been living there with for a one while. One prediction, Tom. We're all we can make multiple. Okay, I'm giving. This is me buying you guys time to think. I'm being nice. <laughs> sure, I'll, I'll one up you. Uh, I think it's going to be predominantly Eshin in the box. Okay. Okay. Right on. Right on. Good. Okay. I mean, what? What are you? What are you? What are you labeling that one? You calling that sure thing as well? Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, nice. Because that's what sells ninja rats. Ninja rats certainly certainly do sell. Yes. Okay. Very good. Uh, Baron Lloyd said for years. Dot dot mm-hmm. dot. Eighteen months. Yeah. Exactly. No. It's you're, you're absolutely right. Okay. Uh, what else we got? What do we What do we want to see? Yeah, what do we think? So, what do we hope? What do we dream? What do we predict? It uh, obviously we have reason to think that we're going to get some Stormcast. Uh, some old Stormcast models will get refreshed into Thunderstrike armor. Uh, we have the thing with Realms of Ruin, the RTS video game. Uh, we have Ionis and so on, right? So maybe on the flip side, some of those models might go away entirely, might go to Legends, I wonder. Some of those original 2015, 20, yeah, 2015 Stormcast models. Sure. Do you think we'll get we'll, we'll Thunderstrike just... Liberators? Yeah. Yeah. I just don't know that they're actually going to refresh everything. Like, I wonder... So, what made me think of this is my ongoing conspiracy around Judicators at 200 points. Okay. And the travesty and the lack of love for the, these lowly Judicators that don't do anything in the game with the bows. Yeah, the, the crossbows can, can do some work. That I think they're going to get axed. And it's just... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, we have Stormcast with bows, you. right? We have yeah, exactly. we got Vigilors. Yeah, yeah. We have Vigilors. We, got, we got Vigilors. Why do we need them? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we have long strikes. You know, if you want crossbows. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, my my precious Judicators are just going to go bye bye entirely. Okay, they're they're already dead, Vince. Let's just let's just confirm it. Just kill it. Stop. <laughs> He's already dead. Yeah. Okay. So we call the range. We redesign what remains into Thunderstrike armor. Is that the prediction? More or less. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. I mean, so would this in- include keeping units, but redesigning the kits so that they're like multi, like multi kits? So, like, I can imagine a world where, like, if they decide to keep Liberators and Judicators, they just move it mm. so that they're the same core model with alternate build. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. That'd be nice. Yeah, that'd be interesting. The, yeah, I mean, they already yeah, were like to we, some degree. Like, I built all of my Judicators uh, originally out of Liberator liberators. bodies. Yeah, I just ordered <laughs> with, the, like, the bow bits. hands. Yeah. Um, yep. Yep. Yeah, we got vanquishers and and vindictors. You know that's oh, and we have kit. castigators for co- uh, for crossbow. We also have castigators for crossbow. Right, just so yep. many, just so <laughs> many. God in heaven, there's too many duplicates in that range. Okay, yeah, a culling definitely feels in order. So we're we're calling for a yeah. culling. Okay, yeah, of stormcast. Oh man, yeah. trim that line down. Okay, very good. Could the could the great fracturing happen? No. You don't think so? No. No. I I no, just, there's no there's no setup for it. No, like not a like splitting like a but I just wonder like we've seen kind of glimpses over the years of like mm-hmm. certain models being uh like we've seen again we saw the chapters. Like this is a, a call out back in like second edition that I suggested going to third edition we might get this split, right? Of mm. like distinct army books for the 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 various storm hosts or whatever. Like I just wonder what if they push certain product lines into certain like certain stormcast units into certain product like certain storm hosts or whatever. Um, I don't think so, and I'll tell you why. Because the money's not there. Okay. okay, it's that simple. Like stormcast is a decently popular army. Okay, sure. it generally has sure. a good meta representation, one of the higher mm-hmm. meta representations, right? Yep. But in the end, it's just another army in the mix. Like it's high meta, like it, it at one point, I think the highest it ever peaked in the history of AOS was at about 12% of the meta some yeah. years back. Yeah, and, second edition. Yeah, and now it's basically ridden for more or less years around the same place between five and 6%. You know, if you hold a tournament, no matter what the state of Stormcast, as far as its win rate or its performance in the meta, you will get a couple Stormcast players showing up, right? Especially if you live anywhere near uh, Matthew Swinney, for example. <laughs> sure. But or, or um, Missouri, but we we have so many Stormcast players, in Missouri. It's, yeah, I, yeah, I sure. would put us up as having the most in any, if for some reason, in, in any state in this country. It's wild. 
But that percentage is nothing. And I really cannot emphasize this enough. Yeah. Nothing compared to Space Marine representation. Okay. Yeah. Like, Space Marines are the... They're not. They're like the plurality of armies in 40k, with a huge lead. Okay, mm -hmm. they look like the they look like the Republican primary field right now, basically, and as far as like how how the percentages are stacked out. Okay, and it's because like Stormcasts are just like so indelibly 40k, and have and and most 40k players like. Have a you mean have a space space marines. You mean What'd space marines are in doubt? You said storm. Yeah, sorry. Space marines are indelibly forty k. I apologize. Um, yeah. and like they they just have like you know if you play forty k, you probably have a space marine army. I have a space marine army, Tom. I have a fully painted space marine army. Okay, I <laughs> I've played it like once in in the newest edition, right? Hmm. It's wild how many people own and collect space marines like they're they're an order of magnitude bigger is my point mm -hmm. so they can afford to split off and have other books and stuff like that like they have the market to support that stormcast just doesn't it's just another army in the end it may be the flagship faction of the game it may go on like the logos and have a statue out front but it does not have the the player base representation that's it what do we want to see mechanically? Like, oh, uh, I mean, a lot of people oh, were saying the half inch of a half inch thing, right? Or the Battle Brothers thing, basically yeah. coming back and being in the rules. Hopefully. I assume we're going to see that just built in. Let me ask yeah. you the question: Will Fourth Edition finally be the death of the range on weapons, or are we going to still keep a mixed profile? I think we all agree we'll probably see the the fight in two ranks, basically, for right. lack of a better term. Okay. Um, are we going to see uh, them still retain weapon ranges, or will they just kill that completely? I, I, I think they'll probably keep it. I'm not even sure I would personally want them to get rid of it. I suspect it would improve the quality of the game. I, like in my mind, one of the principles here, as we've long discussed, is okay. Let's think about what can we cut to reduce time in this game. How, how can we get back to two thirty with yeah with with tournament games, for example, and just make this more accessible for casual players? So that would be on my list of things that could be cut right off the gate, right out of the gate. But what about the fire slayer hand axes? Are they table wide? What do you mean? We're not talking weapon range on on ranged weapons, Tom. We're talking about melee range. Yeah, oh. yeah, just just, oh, just only melee, melee range. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm, I real quick, Tom. I do love obviously. I, I love the the you know the gameplay nuance of ranges, right? It it, it makes it, it's interesting, you know, screening and you can do various tricks and there, there's there's depth there that's intriguing, right, to competitive players. It's just yeah. Anyway, so I, then let me ask this. Yeah. Let's say that we do kill. Let's say that we do kill weapon ranges. Yeah. Melee weapon sure. ranges. Yeah. How do you resolve... Is it... Um, if you're within three inches, you can attack? No, it's it'd be the standard thing like it was. It's like, you either do it... There's a couple different ways it could work. But, like, here's a simple... Here's a simple potential. You're within half an inch of an enemy, or an inch of an enemy... And then you're within a half an inch of somebody within a half an inch or an inch of an enemy. That's it. So what you're proposing is all of the ability that stop piling become uh, infinitely worse. Uh, well, first of all, good. Um, well, no, see, what I'm saying is, is I mean, like, I'm not talking about how I much I'd love to make piling simpler and kill the crap. No, out of no, that. no, you're you're here. You're you are mishearing me. When okay. I say worse, I'm not saying better for the game i'm saying worse for the game why because if if everything moves to a half inch weapon range that like any if if you have any way to like stop I said, you can make it an inch it, it can just be everybody's an inch or a half it doesn't inch matter somebody within an inch that 
all of that's fine. That's all still worse than having a three inch range, even when you can't pile in being able to attack with your primary. Like basically, no one has a three inch range. So what are we talking about other than single models? Most well, melee troops like do monsters. not have a three inch range. I'm talking about like monster monster weapon ranges. Yeah. Okay. So what? So monsters fight. Monsters are going to be in but contact with the thing they're fighting. Not if they can't pile. If they're within three inches and can't pile. They're like. The concern here would be big boys, right? Right. We, we, you're saying like what? They get trapped somewhere, stuck on something, and can't actually pile in. They get point. they get stuck on something. They get behind any any unit that's not their unit, but three inches of, of an enemy. Like any unit that's like they get. They stuck can't reach behind. over the top anymore. Is your point? They can't reach over the top anymore. Right. Or okay. or abilities that shut down pylons. Which there, it's not just one or two. There are one or two that are egregious, but there are many in the meta that are out like, there. Like, legitimately, I would love it if, uh, if, if, here's what I'll say. Here, here's how I'd rank this. I don't think they'll get rid of weapon, get rid of weapon ranges. And let me tell you why. Sure. The sheer number of scrolls it would require them to update and reformat. <laughs> sure. Yeah. That's it. The but, actual man hours. I literally think yeah. that's why it doesn't go away. Okay. Should it? Yeah, probably. And then, by the way, on those big monsters, you just write back into them that they that they have a three inch threat range or something on the few big monsters you need to, or you make it a function of the monster type, right? That monsters themselves have it or whatever. What I'm suggesting now, is is like I think I think it's a design trap because of all of not only the obvious primary consequences of a change like that but the secondary and tertiary it'll take it'll take 18 months to work that out in the system balance i, I mean like power to hit. or tom or they'll just do it right sure to work out the balance you mean like when coherency randomly changed and then a bunch of units became utter garbage they really put a lot of work into figuring out the balance of that didn't they no, no they just changed it and then is... a bunch of units went in the bin Right, and that's that, and that's what I'm saying is that the whole meta, like the whole thing, like we all suffer for 18 months until that works itself out. That's what I'm suggesting. I one, I don't think it would be as big a deal as you're saying. Is is my honest answer? I think in the vast majority of combats, the vast majority of combats, vast, vast, Duncan, Idaho, vast. Okay. It just doesn't matter. You go up, your models go in and attack the monster. The monster's fighting you back. That's how it works. Right? That's most people's experience with the game. In angle shooting is where it ends up becoming a problem. Most of the sure. time. Sure. Okay. Now, that being said, I really don't think they'll kill weapon range, as I said, because of the sheer just man hours they'd have to put into it. But I do think we'll get the rule of like, I think it'll be weapon range or you fight within, you fight within. Mm -hmm. Then the range. And the weapons, the weapon range stays there as a backstop. That's it. Yeah. Okay. So to get out some of the ones that I mean we've hit before. Oh, probably. What? By the way, what are we yeah. putting the weapon range change at? I'm gonna put it at fifty fifty. I'm saying it's a fifty fifty. Yeah, I'm I think it's, with I that. think it's hopium. I think it's hopium. I I cannot imagine them changing the weapon because of all the secondary consequences. There'd be a lot, Tom. Yeah, there'd be a lot. like like yeah. from just from a balance standpoint, and just because then if we do that, you're talking about a ravening horde's entire product, like update of everything in order to update all scrolls. Perfect. Next question. You just you tripped <laughs> exactly. to the next question. <laughs> do the books carry over, or do we do we do we index at fourth edition? This would be the time. We've gone three editions. Yeah. Is it time to index? Every three editions, you index. This is the rules. This is the I'm rules. Pretty of sure, I didn't make it. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're gonna, get, we're gonna get indexed. Oh, uh, okay. There's no way. There's oh. no way. Discuss, I, gentlemen. I mean, 40k just got it, and yeah, eighth, ninth, tenth. That was their third. Yeah, Tom. I just I I say I I don't know if it's necessary. I mean, who knows? It, I worry that it's more likely to be a a net negative, at least in the, the near term. I mean, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, the TLDR is, I, I think it's probably going to happen. Do you know how many War Scrolls are in the game? It's a ton, man. Oh. I know. 
No, let me start again. Do you know how many War Scrolls are in the Stormcast book? <laughs> sure. sure. 79. Uh, yep. Close enough. Yeah. And how many and how many battle tomes do we have? Uh, like 24. I yeah, think 24. 24. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. They don't all have 79 I mean, scrolls. But yes. I understand that. But we have well over a thousand war scrolls. Uh, yes, I've said it's a major hurdle. Your point. It would make life easier if they just binned the whole thing off and indexed it, right? Like start from scratch. I don't uh, think so. I, I think the amount of work that you're suggesting if they're going to index would it's be enormous, yeah. it's enormous and it would like i i think that they don't have the bandwidth when we well, see maybe, the problems that yeah. we see on like rollouts and stuff like that i don't think that they have the bandwidth to, to roll it out maybe one thing in your favor one thing what would put me a foot in your camp is that i th- think it's fair to say 40k ninth edition had a lot more issues Sure. Than AOS third edition, no doubt. Like right, so just c- the conclusion being that we don't necessarily need to go in and gut this thing and make substantial changes, blah blah blah. Right, right. We need to remove some things, streamline some things. But yeah, so that would certainly like that through that lens. I could have a foot in your camp on that. Okay. Ultimately, historically, think, every three editions is when we went to indexes and sort of binned everything and started over, right? Yeah. I think what the real answer to that question is, is not, is, is not really, uh, it can't be answered in itself. It's how much do they want to mess with the core rules of the game? It's how much mm. do they feel the need to do the every three edition shuffle that we've historically done in Warhammer? Where yeah. every basically fourth edition was a was a massive change, right? And like basically every sort of ten year period, you you get this big change, and that's when this one's mm-hmm. due, right? Um, this will be at like the nine year mark, so we're we're there, and right. so it's the question of do they feel it's worth it? Do they do they change enough of the core rules that they're like, well, we've None of the old books work, so we've got to do it. We're under the gun. Right. right. Or do they try to go, no, continue, living edition, we'll keep hopping this and keep going and and do the Battle Tome shuffle again, right? And we'll go fourth edition and we'll, we'll release the 24 Battle Tomes all over again. What I'll say is this. If they are... It depends... I, the real question then is: is how much of the core game is changing? Yeah, that's, so, that's what I'm saying. Like, yes. if they're willing to be, bin like battle tactics and stuff like that, right? If they're yeah, willing sure. to bin all that moving into the new edition, then I could see it happening. I also don't think that they they're going to do that. Like, you could imagine lots of... It It doesn't even necessarily need to be anything large. You could imagine it just being death by a thousand cuts. What I mean there is... Imagine that... Let us let me just walk you through a sequence here, Tom. Okay? Let's say the spellcasting rules change in, in some way. Maybe it's a minor way. Maybe it's not. Okay? But maybe they, they change in some way. Uh, and then... The, Moving spellcasting to every phase. I I don't know. Sure. Like okay, that's sure. That's probably bigger than what I was thinking. But let's say yes. Okay. Sure. Okay. Um. But you could you could also just have spells move into a more keyworded type thing where they have certain interactions or stuff like that. Right. One of the great problems we've always had with spells is that they they don't have a layer down. They the spells in Warhammer have always in AOS at least. Sorry, have been missing what. Uh, D and D long ago figured out is that other typographies assist than when you need to create more rules later. What I mean by that is D and D from the earliest periods had evocation versus abjuration versus illusion, right? And so you could create things and characters and and stuff like that that were good with that particular type of thing, but not as good with other things, right? And when you're rolling a 2d6 magic system, one of the big, big, big problems is that we're not dealing with a typography. Spells are spells are spells, right? 
other than endless spells, which occupy their own spells that summon endless spells are their only, the only thing that's different. So like creating a typography where you could say this wizard has plus one to cast this type of spells Mm. would actually open up a new significant space because right now their only choice is plus one to cast. And that's such a massive bonus right? because then it goes out and applies to everything ever they ever print. Right. They sometimes they've they can construe it tightly and say like everything in this lore that's really the most control they have right now, right? So, anyways, okay, but they change that a little. Heroic actions. Let's say they rewrite those. They all, heroic actions are different now. They're smart. You roll the dice first, and they all work on a set dice roll, and then have some bonus like we proposed. Let's sure. say they change battle tactics in some decently significant way, but they're still around as a secondary objective. Right. Let's say they go in and rewrite the enhancements section completely because it's trash and nobody knows how the heck to use it when they first start. Let's say they go in and change Monstrous Rampages some. Let's say we have the Battle Brothers thing put automatically into combat. Okay. Whatever. Right? You, we you could just describe our movement from 2nd to 3rd edition. Yeah, it's my... My point is you could get enough of those changes that now the old books get really weird and they do have to go an index is becomes necessary because not because we made any single huge change, but because we made enough small ones. And I, I guess what I would say is that everything that you just described was literally the move from second to third. And, and, if, and if that and if that didn't constitute a need for a ravening hordes update, right? I don't know what like i like to me they would have to con- they would have to change core mechanics sure yeah okay to 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 really for, to really constitute a need, a need i don't uh, know man the, the reason i say it is because like in second edition a lot of the stuff just worked whereas like it was just base books or and we didn't even have all the books whereas in, i, I mean know, we're still running on first for, edition books for god's sakes for a while, we were literally like our the only command abilities that were out there were the core command abilities. Yeah, like yeah, that's yeah. What everybody understand. did every turn. Whereas now they've integrated so much of this crap into everybody's individual books. Like everybody's third right. edition books has like unique heroic actions and monstrous rampages, yeah. and you know, like my point is, you could change less and have the impact be greater than what you're describing, because mm-hmm. that stuff didn't exist in second edition tomes or first edition tomes. So when they suddenly introduced new stuff and piled it on top, didn't matter because there was nothing there to change. If you're going to trim back and not add, then the books become weird. Sure. That's the only point. Okay. Uh, all right. I'd say if you're if I'm going to put a bet on it, I'd honestly think it's, I don't know, man, I'd probably go 50-50. I'd come down right in the middle. I could see it being an index thing. By the by, I'm not even sure I'd hate it if books going forward were like some amalgam of 40k and what we saw in the old world, where it's like, here's a good guy book, here's a bad guy book, or here's a here's a chaos book, here's a destruction book, here's a death book, here's a uh, uh, destruction book. Whoever I forgot, I don't know, whatever it is. You I mean, get it, right? they did they did that when we moved into AOS, where you basically had the four Grand Alliance times. I understand, and then. But instead, use what you learned in Dawnbringers and Armies of Renown mm-hmm. and print individual tomes, but they just give specialized armies in some way. They completely replace. Right. So some combination of like 40k and what they were talking about with Old World. But anyways, uh, neither here nor there. So, like the base conception exists in this in this single tome. Go so ahead. Backing up, backing up, guys, I'm a little unclear on where you two stand on the current state of the AOS core rules. Uh how too complicated how... uh but but mostly good okay and then tom uh where, where i would say too complicated i'm more neutral mm. and why are you what in particular makes you more neutral uh, like... i like i i truly uh, i truly feel that battle tactics are a pox on all things that are fun about this like i think that the the way that battle tactics have been integrated into the larger competitive scene as well as the way that they have um been uh like not only the world that we live in not only are they now being introduced in books they're being added in uh 
updates, like War Scroll update stuff, right? In order to balance army factions. Yeah. Like, think about that. Like, the competitive yeah. performance, the way that they're fixing some armies is giving them easier battle tactics so that they can auto they can auto get tournament points. Mm. Yeah, sure. Like to yep. me, like that is poison. I agree. Like that is that is like and so that entire it's sub so inside baseball. It does not entire... materially change the experience of playing the army. Correct. All of that just needs to be jettisoned straight out the window. Like all of that is death. But but here's the deal. I think you can get rid of all that and still keep uh, maintain a very core, very playable game. There are events that do that, and and so, but I think the experience as it is now, like scenarios, don't matter. What matters is can you get all five. Well, yeah, I'm hold on. Let me clarify thing. something because yeah, yeah. it's being discussed in the comments. Yeah. When I'm saying these Grand Alliance books, what I don't mean like just everything soup. That's not what I'm describing, nor do I think they'll bring back Grand Alliance stuff other than in sort of a narrative capacity. What I'm describing is more like what you saw with Ravening Hordes and Forces of Fantasy or whatever in the Old World stuff, where instead of putting out an individual battle tome for every army, the edition launches and you get four books, one for each Grand Alliance. And in that book is the individual army rules for the standard version of that army. Okay, yeah. the simplified so, standard version of that army. You get a destruction Here's, book that has an Iron Jaws rules. It has uh, this is the or, Iron Jaws or, section. Or, you open to the Iron, Iron Jaws, Jaws section. It has Iron Jaws points, Iron Jaws scrolls, Iron Jaws abilities, that. allegiance abilities. Yep. yep, and like a one page description of what this faction is. Correct. And then you go change the page and you hit Gloom Spike Gets, and this is what the Gloom Spike Gets are. And it's the entire core of what it takes to play that army in the game. Um, in 20 pages or 30 Correct. pages or whatever. And you basically have an entire Grand Alliance in a single book. For And then from that point on, you don't update the core. You only update like regiments of renown or armies of renown style updates. Correct. You replace, right? So like, here's the base. Here's the function. You can stop here forever and be done. Yeah. But then here we're going to publish this thing, the the Grandy Tomy Expandimatica, okay, of Stormcast. And in it, it has armies of renown that basically you can say, okay, throw out. You don't use those rules at all. You only use what's in here. Armies of renown. Yeah, bring your style. I think they're going to make a lot less money. Like, I'd be very interested to see what the, like, the economics are. Because what it's what it says is you don't have 24 guaranteed releases set out just updating battle tokens. That is lying through math. You need to think that thought through again. You need to step back and really think that through what you just said. Okay. Okay. How many people buy all 24 books? Uh, 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 anybody, a portion, a small portion of the player base. Very small. Least. Vanishingly 5%, small. I would even believe 5%? that much. No way. You don't think so? No freaking way. No freaking way. One in twenty players has all every buys every battle tome. Not even a chance. No way. Nope. The problem has always classically been when they make these individual battle tomes that they're selling that battle tome to four to five percent of the audience. That's always been the problem. This adds for book like everybody who you've already got in the tank who loves that army is going to buy the thing anyways when you do your expansion book. This gives you four more tomes that has a lot more popularity because you've crushed all of those percentages together. So now if you play any of the death armies, you buy this book and more people will buy four since it's only four and not 24. You lower the barrier to owning the rules to all armies when you make it four books and you've still got them in the tank for there. You would sell more books in the way I'm describing. Not less. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure about that. I, I mean, I can like, math it out pretty easy. It's not a hard business case. Like right now, the the way these tomes are released is so singular. Okay, a bunch of people come and watch the show, like. All every time sure. we do a Battle Tome review show, it's always our most popular shows. 
Of right? course. Yep. Yep. Because everybody wants to know, right? But most of those people aren't going to buy a book. If you're not in the tank for that army, you're just going to read it on Wapedia or whatever. Why would you go buy the book for not your army? Unless you're like a tournament grinder. And even then, you probably just read it on Wapedia. Like, it is collectors that buy every book. And that is a vanishingly small percentage. Book collectors. In this case, you start with four main books that you can charge a premium for, I would add. Okay. And every one of those four books, you're going to get... You've now crunched together the percentage. So at minimum, all of your other players come together and they buy that. So you've turned 4% into 20% or whatever. Okay. But you also will get people upscaling because they'll be split across some of the books with their couple armies, and so they'll buy more of them. As time goes on and you release your supplementary expandopedias, you'd actually, like, the people who are really in the tank for the army who right now would buy the Battle Tome will still go buy this thing too. Nothing changed. But now you got them to buy two books for their one army. Not one. Before you were selling that person one book over the course of the edition. Now you're selling them two. It's that easy. What I am describing would be a better experience for everyone and to make them more money. That's it. Now, I don't know if they'll have the... the business savvy to actually make a product line that would work like this but hey who knows all right let's keep going what else new edition wise what else what else haven't we mentioned new edition i do think we will see a change to battle tactics i doubt Ow. they're going away yeah uh, yeah tom i doubt they're going to go away uh which i mean personally i would like to see the system maintain a secondary system. It needs to be better implemented than what we have currently, what we've had. I, sus I think it would be a better world to live in if we have our casual, uh, you know, sort of the general audience version of the game without battle tactics, as we've discussed a lot. And then you have our annual GHB, and that has an annual set of battle tactics. And then you have maybe each battle plan with X number of battle tactics built in, and that's it. And then that's all that we use. We don't have battle tome, battle tactics. I think that'd be a better world, uh, more constrained, you know, in the options, etc. cetera. Uh, but yeah, I have a hard time saying that they're gonna do away with battle tactics entirely. Yeah, Any thoughts? I don't know. Yeah. I, I think they could change it in 50 ways that would be better than, than what it is. I, I agree with I you. I'd like to see more stuff baked poison. into the battle plans. Um, like there's, there's 10 good ways you could do it that aren't, that aren't like Tom's describing. And, and frankly, I agree with you to me. I'd call it a, I'd call it a sure thing. We're going to see some kind of change to it, but yeah. that might be just me pushing it up over 50, 50 out of pure hope. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so this, this is probably not the time to do it, but yeah, I would be curious Tom to talk more sometime about why. I mean, I'd actually never heard you quite go this far, or at least I don't remember you going this far where you you essentially are saying you think. A secondary system is poison. What I'm hearing is a secondary system is poison to the game. Is that uh, what you're saying? A, a universal secondary system is poison because huh. it's what actually drives the performance, not the primary system. I would argue that I think the the better design is uh, is individual secondaries per uh, like per like you write a scenario and there are associated secondaries with that scenario. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. because like I, because then like it, yeah. Um, it, yeah, like just real quick here, like the Joe McGill said, the biggest change to secondary objectives has to be removing the necessity to score them in all five rounds or you lose. Right. And I think that's kind of what you're point. We are one of the things you're pushing on there strongly, Tom, right? Like that's you fair. could imagine the system yeah, yeah. changing to be where like there's eight universals and at the start of each game, you pick three of them secretly. And over yeah. the course of the game, you have to accomplish all three of those. 
right? You could even potentially do two in one round or something like that, right? But if you get your three, you get your three. But you have five rounds to do the three of them. They can be done simultaneously. They can be done separately. You can skip a round, that kind of thing. It would loosen it but still allow it to be there, those kinds of things. You could imagine, I'm not saying that's a perfect system. I'm saying that is more of a move where it doesn't become like, oops, I dropped one, I lose. Right, right. Yeah, that's that's a very good point. Yeah. Because, I mean, the the real meta right now is playing playing battle tactics. And if you can play all your battle tactics, you can reliably uh, perform in the meta. Like you can reliably perform and win events. Yeah. Like that's that's the long and the short of it. Like I hate when I begin dreaming up lists and then everybody's like, well, why haven't you included a surf unit or whatever? You know, like I'm thinking about <laughs> FEC yeah. in order for your battle tactics. And so at that point, like battle tactics drive list composition. Yeah. Yeah, you're talking yeah. about how you can we can make lists full of whatever you want. It's like, yeah, but those lists very easily become trash because they can't right. actually play the real game that's going on. <laughs> right, because the real game is the battle tactic game, not the Warhammer game with scenarios that I thought we were playing. Right. Yeah, I, I personally would just take that one level higher. You're playing the game to 28. Yeah, yeah. With it. You're not playing yeah. the killing game necessarily. There's a right. lot you're less playing the game to 28. Game. You're playing yep. the game to 28 is I yep. think is, yeah. is primary is still relevant, but yeah, but every single point matters, particularly on against good players. These games, yep. yeah, like if you, I look, I was following the championships and so many of those games were like one point games and yeah, sure. like yeah. very, very, very tight, right? With the scoring system that we have. So anyhow, yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, terrain. That's a big one. We've emphasized a lot. A real terrain God, system. God I, I have to believe. Me. Come on. Fourth edition, sure thing. sure thing. Get it in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, has to be. Yeah. I would also yeah. say my other sure thing for, for new edition is um, uh, we will see a better uh, on-ramp system for new players. Uh, I hope so. Yeah, The equivalent of the combat patrol over That's whatever true. in 40k. Um, yeah. Like I, there is no universe where they didn't look at what 40 K did and go, well, we, we have nothing to do here. We're good. They <laughs> absolutely have to know that, uh, that they have a real problem right now with the, the addition and, and like actually getting new players in the game. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's so clear. <laughs> Cygnus Maximus says, nope, no real terrain system, just a return of Battle Tome Chaos Dreadhold. Yes, <laughs> the real champion we've all been waiting for. Uh, okay. Man, those things are going to be worth money in the future. They're going to be so rare. Sure. Sure. Uh, okay. I think we've plumbed the new addition to to the bottom of this well. Um, uh, CJ said, will it be will it be Vanguard or will they re rebox? I don't know, man. Probably Vanguard type of Probably thing. Probably Vanguard, but, yeah. But, but, you know, who knows? It, that feels yeah. like what they've been aiming at for a while. Although that, that, though they may still rebox some of them on top of that as they, like, want to rebalance things or whatever. So, all right. We ready to keep going? Next one? So, uh, Boom! I did have... Oh, yeah, I got... oh I'm going to left this. turn you all. Yeah, That's right. You didn't think that we were going to talk about this, but we are the new old world. That's right. We're going to do old world predictions. Mm -hmm. You ready? That's here. Here we go, folks. You thought it wasn't going to happen. It is. We talk about Warhammer on this show of the fantasy variety. So get into it. Uh, so now it's time for old world predictions. Lock in. Okay. Uh, Here's what I think. Here's I'll, I'll start while you guys formulate some opinions. Since I oh, I'm, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be quiet this entire segment. Nope, you so must have you opinions. <laughs> that is the requirement. Uh, I think this is going to be one of the I like. I think old world in general, they are going to have an uphill climb. Mm. And by that, what I mean is they are releasing a very complicated game full of a lot of reconstituted very old models using potentially some rules that are very outdated in a world of other rank and flank systems that have continued to advance in the decade intervening, right? Uh, <clears throat> but it is very Warhammer. And nostalgia 
does sell product. It sells launch boxes really well. The question is, does it make long-term players? Okay. And I think that turns completely on one, those like, I think those, whatever they called them, arcane encyclopedia thingies, uh, how good those are. And how much do they let you actually, you know, kind of build the army you want and play the the your version of the army you can imagine and stuff like that, right? Because if they have alternate armies or blah, 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 or whatever, how much can you build the thing you want to build? Play the army you want to play. Because that, that was the thing. That is the thing that Fantasy lacked that AOS delivered, was you had, you were empowered to make your army your own, right? That was really hard in Fantasy. And so if those things deliver, then that's a big deal. And the other thing I'll say is it's going to be almost completely down to how good are the new models, whatever the new models are for the other armies they come out with. How good are those new models? And how much does that encourage? Like beyond this Bretonian and Tomb King stuff we've seen. Yeah. You know, do we actually get the delivery of... Remember when they were talking all about Kislev and all that constantly? Haven't heard peep one about that recently. Mm. Okay. Like, do we get stuff that delivers on the promise of what was in Total War or what the old world could have been or on these other things? Okay. Uh, do we get kits that live up to that? I think that's the big question for me in the old world. Right. Tom, you got thoughts on this? I'm okay if I'm, if I'm the only one predicting, by the way. I think one. the success of it is going to be dependent upon how accessible um, old kits are for purchase. Okay. Um, and I think that this is, a, like, this is not something, like, I think that they, like, I don't know how they've solved this problem. But they're going to release a game where 90% of the models are not available. Unless like, and or very old, or, and at or best very case old. they're like, very old, even yeah, made of metal or resin. Right, right, right. Yeah. Best case they're very old, but yes. like, are like, is the entire system going to revolve around a rotated, rotating made to order system, or because it's not going to be on demand? They can't keep up. Like normal GW can't keep their normal main games product lines in stock sure let alone specialist games sure and so like i think in a very like in a very real sense they are maybe assuming that there's a lot of product out there and that people can find armies to play this and i think that that is death like that is a death sentence to the success of old world like if you want old world to be successful the models, you, like, you have to be able to go, you know what, I want to start a high elf army. I need to go buy one. Well, if you're going to go to eBay right now, that doesn't exist. Sure. Not unless you're going to spend $3,000 and buy one of the two Skycutter chariots that are on eBay for $250 or whatever. Right? Like, let alone any of the other product lines that have been basically discontinued. Like, some stuff is fairly evergreen from AOS, like they could pull that in, but a lot of it isn't. And a lot of it is just gone. And so starting those armies are going to be difficult. Um, and so the question is, is how accessible are old kits going to be? Okay. Um, because they're making an entire game based on models that you can't, you don't actually, like you can't get to build armies. I, and I as I was saying, that's why I'm saying, even if they're accessible, let's say they're all released. Let's say they just run enough copies out of these old molds. Okay, you've still got the problem that the the that your that ninety percent of your kits, and that's being generous, are made of metal resin and twenty year old plastic. Right, like that's not going to be a positive experience. Putting together the the fine cast Bretonian trebuchet or whatever is not going to be a positive experience. Okay. Putting together like the metal bone giant or whatever. Remember that thing? If that thing still exists in Tomb Kings, it's not going to be a positive yeah. experience. Okay. 
Uh, so like not only do all the kits have to be available, even in the best case where they are, they're still going against even their other games and their the other 10% of their units that are new flashy stuff that yeah. looks really cool. Yeah. And you're relaunching a game that failed because of like in the market. The market rejected this game. You can be sad about the demise of the old world, and that's fine. I understand mm -hmm. if people are emotionally attached to this thing. But, like, the market did judge this thing a failure. The ICV2 reports towards the end, Wormer Fantasy fell off the chart for a couple reports. That's insane. Mm. That means it wasn't in the top five selling games in its category. All right. So its revenue was in the trash. Yep. And how much of this are you really going to sell? The other problem with them not re-sculpting everything, Tom, with these old kits, like you talk about the availability of old kits. I'm not actually sure that's even the biggest hurdle. My real problem is, like we looked at those launch boxes earlier, right? Yep. I could put that entire launch box sans new Crocoboss and on the table right now. I have all that stuff. I have it right now. I don't need to buy a single model. I still have them all square based. Same with the Bretonians. I have tons of knights ready to go. I've got peasants. I've got bowmen. I've got everything. Reliquaries and trebuchets and peg knights i've got the whole shooting match right what would make me go buy new stuff is making new models yeah yeah like like a kislev army like a kislev army but so much of this is going to at launch will just be old existing plastics that most of their target market the persona that they've targeted already owns. already has yeah yeah, it's funny. Um, I want to kind of make my point. Like, I hear that. But I want to make my point very, like, poignant. We just released an army book, like a new book, Cities of Sigmar, a couple months mm -hmm. ago. Right? Two yep. months ago? Yep. Half. Half of that line is not available right now from GW. Sure. You know what the irony is? Most of it is old world stuff. Sure. All the dark elf stuff, all the dwarf stuff. Um, most of the stuff that you would actually expect for a game like this isn't even available. And that's a current game. Yep. That's a current line that they just launched. And half of it, half of the kits aren't available at game out in the book. That or that are in the book, let me say it that way. Like that's a problem. Sure. So I think production capabilities will will likely hinder any growth that this game might have. So, you know, that's that's it's it's a challenge. I'm I'm very interested to see where this goes over the course of the year. My prediction is the initial launch boxes will sell very well. Okay? Because they won't make a ton of them. And they'll basically sell out, which will encourage this sort of like FOMO attitude, right? But then how much do, do we get the releases to support it for the rest of the year? How much do we have new kits? How much actual of it do we see it being played? That kind of thing, right? Like, is there going to be an old world tournament at Adepticon? I assume, right? Probably, yeah. I yep. so. How many people are we getting, right? I'm not saying 24. I expect it to be the that'd equivalent be, of AOS year one. Of course, that'd be insane. 24. Right. Uh, it'd be higher than that. I'd say at least 40. Okay. Right. How many people are showing up to these tournaments? That kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. 40 might be conservative. But anyway, yeah. I, I just personally, I don't have a lot of opinions on this. Guys, yeah, this is just kind of outside of my scope of knowledge and... Yeah, I mean, 
I have a lot of thoughts running through my head, but they're a little ancillary. Like I'm thinking about 3D printing and getting oh, into sure. like, like what, what's yeah, the actual... another problem in a, in a world of, <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. In a world of selling generic fantasy kits from 20 years ago into yeah. now into a market where 3D printing is so rife and easy. Like, you know, Rob's doing his whole square based podcast. He just printed, he just 3D printed out his whole fantasy army for all his nights. Right. There's, sure. there's so many he's like, I'm not putting up with there. buying old, yeah. or buying this. I'm not buying your, I am not buying <laughs> your repackaged models from 20 years ago. I'm just going right. to 3D print my, uh, something that looks, you know, way better uh, for pennies. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. It's because it's just generic thing. concepts writ large. <laughs> all right. Uh, but yeah, it'll be very interesting. I don't know. Like Blood Bowl has been able to be successful, but is the, is Blood Bowl a reasonable analogy to this? Maybe not. Oh, no uh, way. Horse, horse, I mean, yeah. Horse like, Heresy would be the probably Horse the right Heresy one. has to be the one you compare it to. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Like and they but, can't accept Blood Bowl numbers on this. Right. No, but a Horse Heresy, like they don't have as many like regimented events, do they? Like it's more, um, it is more like lore based, and it is more like narrative, isn't it? Like that a community. I, I don't That's know. my impression. I'm not sure. That's certainly my impression based on upon locally and the players. That yeah, I'm I don't. Of I don't know the the. Okay. I don't know the Horus Heresy community. I mean, I'll say there's a pretty big event at, um, uh, at Nova, but I can't speak beyond that. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. I mean, hey, look, interesting road ahead for the old world. All right, I'll take us out of this. Let's get back to AOS. Now that I've now that I've left now that I've swerved you. Uh okay. Let's talk new battle tomes. Um we talked a little bit about this earlier. Uh I mean, we're done with battle tomes now. Is it well you, you, FEC you think release in the new year. You think you think oh, you're saying you're not predicting that we're done with battle tomes. Like you're not taking a hard line on that. I'm I'm saying yeah. I, I'm not saying that. I'm saying I'm making a factual statement. We now have battle tomes for the twenty four armies of AOS. I'm just, I'm just calling the FEC went out, even though like mm -hmm. blah blah blah, sure. Chevrolet's yada yada yada. Yep. We all get it. It's like this the S two D thing from last year. In January, we'll get the book itself and the other models. But like the book is out. It exists. Okay. Are we getting any additional battle tomes pre-launch of fourth edition? Question number one. Question number two. By the way, I have a separate slide for ancillary tomes or ancillary books. So we'll talk about those in a moment. Question number two is if no, is it just all ancillary books from here on out? Have we gotten any confirmation about how many Dombringer books there are? We know there's five. Have we heard if there's six or have they given a final number? We know there's oh, four. Yes. Oh, I don't I think they've said the fifth one. Oh, that's right. That's right. I was counting the. We were, as... we were, we were estimating five because of how early they started. Mm -hmm. Okay. Five has been a number I've seen in past variations of this. I can't remember what my line importance was. I know the Omen. They were all four. Whatever. All of four. them were four prior. Yeah. The 40 k times. Okay. Whatever the last 40k narrative was called, they had five. You know, the Abaddon and all yeah, all of that stuff. That was five, I saw. So, okay, probably five. Four or five. I doubt we're going to get a faction battle tome. There's always the possibility that we'll be surprised and we'll get a legitimate new faction release before 4th edition. I would be pretty surprised by that. But, I mean, that's a possibility. There's no way. There is no way. Yeah, we will not get a pre fourth edition faction. Yeah, I'm I, exactly. I'd have to. I'd, I'd almost call it a sure thing as well. We're done with the FEC book yeah. comes out, and we're done with battle tomes until yeah four point oh. Yep. Yep. Now you may get like some updates or whatever in the two like faction updates, some new models sure. of model updates or whatever in the in the two additional books that I think we're gonna get. But I don't yeah. think that you're going to get any new faction book. Yeah, yeah, that seems likely. Yeah. So that then one question is with the fifth. Well, seemingly we are. The Ushran is the yeah. Will be the fourth book, and then he'll be, fifth he'll be, be Dawnbreaker four. 
Yeah, and then fifth would maybe involve. We'll talk about it in a the... second. Hold on, keep your okay. powder dry okay. on ancillary right. books. We're sticking to battle tomes here. Battle sounds, tomes only. Yeah. I, battle tomes only. I did okay. a thought on battle tomes this year, Vince. So I was thinking about, okay, how many battle tomes did we get during a launch year? And what I could remember was mostly three. Yeah, yeah, normally, like, is... normally during launch year, we'll get three to four. And then in year two, we get flooded. Yeah, exactly. It's like, it, it's like, yeah, um, Stormcast, Nighthaunt. And then it was like, I don't know, Fire Slayers or something. And then it was, yeah, Stormcast, War Clans, and Nurgle. And that was it with the launch of third edition in 2021. That's all we got, right? And then, yeah, exactly, Tom. It was like 10 to 12. Uh, I'm not sure we can draw on the historical paradigm here, though. That's the issue. Well, it depends. Mm -hmm. Like, so, for example, in a world where they move to this new alternate, like, codex situation, right, where they release these Grand Alliance, the whole army in one, these sure. four evergreen books. I know yet like, another reason this would be good to do that, by the by, because it would mean you'd right. get all these books at launch. Right. Hypothetically. And then what you would like seemingly have to do is or do like you would go you would move towards yearly narrative like yearly campaign like narrative arcs where five to you know some number of books are released over a 12 month period that each of those books have some degree of story some degree of army of renown you know it would be the exactly the type of model book that we're seeing right now, basically on rotation for three years before you get a new edition I I think okay let's let's talk about the two paradigms here okay? okay paradigm one is they keep the current system of battle tomes yeah yeah right okay all right if they keep the current system of battle tomes I don't think you can look back at the previous two launches as any predictor of what you would see here let me what? unpack that. The launch into second edition was really them going, okay, uh, yeah, I guess we know what we're doing with AOS now. Because first edition was, a, was an all over the place mess. Right, right, mm -hmm. right. Okay. So they were so busy fixing the core system and trying to figure out what they wanted the rules, the, the rules to be and introducing endless spells and nonsense and all of that, right? Like it was, they were still building the plane as it was flying through the air. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I, I, I just they didn't even really have the concept of what a battle tome was in their head when they started planning second edition's launch. Right. Because we only got Sylvaneth partway through first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like for yep. most of second, we were relying on like freaking White Dwarf updates and, and GHB expansions and other dumb crap. Yeah. Okay. So then we move to third, the launch of third, and there's no way their release schedule went how it was supposed to, because remember that thing that happened for about two and a half years? Remember that? Now there was a slight disruption in the world. They released the Cats movie, and then a month later we all got never left our house again for two years, basically, right? <laughs> um like that's it was in the middle of the pandemic, and so they were incredibly disrupted in their schedule because of global shipping and everything else, like their their own ability to, to output and all of that, right? So in my mind, under the paradigm where they keep just doing like a battle tome per, per army, like we just keep on the current trajectory basically and say, okay, let's not rock the boat, which by the way, you've got to rock the boat. You can't just do the same thing forever. Otherwise, people just eventually lose interest, you know? There's no formula so solid that it just works forever. I will say, Vince, real quickly, yeah. I'm just another data point, is 40K 10th is on this paradigm right now. Yep. They're going to get four books this year. The two launch and then two more. Uh, Adeptus, Mechanicus, and Necrons. And that's sure. it, right? So, I don't know. Yeah. It and is, it, it is a data did. point. Yeah. It, that's, a, that's a data point I could get behind. But in my mind, if they're going to stick on the battle tome thing, they should be aiming at like five, six, something mm. like that. And then realistically, 12 to 14 the next year, 
and then close it out in the second half of, or in, in the first half of the year after. So within the first two years, you have all your tomes. That's got to be their goal internally. I mean, that's that's largely what we did this year, such that you go moving into your third year, you only have narrative books. Right. Like, yes, we had like we had two updated tomes, but one is like an, almost a full rewrite of a, of a prior tome, which yeah. would be cities. So, I mean, in my mind, it's like a situation where uh, the 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 problem that this continually presents is that it puts it on the battle tome treadmill. And yes, it does give them something to constantly talk about. But again, they could always you could do that with a sort of expandopedias like I talked about. But let's assume that's paradigm one. Paradigm two is, yeah, they do go a different direction. They index it out and then introduce something and in, in, to, to in, in some ancillary way right then we go back on the battle tome grind again so let's take some big swings here post fourth okay let's assume okay. we keep the same world our launch box we've all said is 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 stormcast and skaven we all agree there's no need to argue about it it's 100 percent true don't worry about it i'm just the surest thing Asterix, it is not a sure thing, but that's okay. We're all hoping. That would mean we get those two, those two tomes. Yeah. Yep. Who else gets the tomes? Who else gets the year one tomes? Who are your people in year one? Who are your golden children that get the first tomes? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm going to guess this. I need to think about it. Uh, Warclans. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Sure. That, yeah. Just be to, to actually place. like squat out the the um the savage orcs and and, and maybe night. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um. Simply because, like, what we often see is that the the armies that were prior launch boxes from prior years end up being the early tomes of the next years. Because mm -hmm. those are, those are like when you're looking at a proportion of people who have models, you're hitting a majority of the, of like, like the armies that most people have be from prior editions. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and to do both like war clans and night haunt, you would also hit both older books and books that have, um, that I hit all the great alliances. It's also important, I think, that the books they my particular guess is the books they release in the first year, they have to be ones where they don't plan on any significant model expansions. Yep. Because they just mm -hmm. don't have the production run to get it going because so much of the factory will be turned to producing whatever the launch box is. Because they need to like, you know, the story about the the 10th edition launch box was that basically like for months the factory just ran that right or everything uh, yeah that, that was like the primary thing taking up most of their capacity so assumingly it's a similar situation right so they'd want to stick to armies where they're not planning any kind of additional real release of any major kind and night haunt and uh war clans or whatever they're stable they're stable would do that they're both stable where they both have already they've they've had expansions they have plenty of models um, you know, Iron Jaws already just recently got their release. So like neither of these really need anything else. Yeah, like yeah, if you want your models cleanup. redone, you do not want your book coming in the first year, is what I'm saying. <laughs> sure. Right. But it, it needs real cleanup. I mean, obviously a lot of folks think bone splitters uh, got we got a lot of reasons to think bone splitters are gonna get axed. Yeah. And yeah, we have the IJ supplement that needs to get incorporated into an actual battle tome. And yeah, so I, I could easily see that as well. Maybe you get like one new unit or a, a new hero, something the, the, the usual little treatment for cruel boys that probably are sitting on more cruel boy model cruel boys models. I think we saw a war band of war cry or underworlds with a with a cruel boys unit. So yeah, I think that's a good guess. Okay. All right, rock on. And let's assume four tomes is our is our sort of cap. That's what we that would be the most we can historically predict. I'll say that. If we got four We'd be we'd be at the high end of historical averages, as much as those data points, as I said, can actually be used as a to elaborate on. So we could get a couple right. more bonus ones, but that that would be sort of the thing. And you know, the problem is I, I I saw everybody in the chat throwing in their options. 
By the way, if you haven't hit like yet, folks, hit like. Do all those fun things. Appreciate it uh, for our lengthy discussion here. If we've said anything you like or not, hit like. Anyways, it's fine. <laughs> we appreciate it uh, for this holiday show. That's that's a, you, you, if you if you want to give us all a gift, a like is certainly nice. Um, but the 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 thing to me with it is everybody had their own things they put in there and probably has reasons why not just because it's the army they play i mean i'm sure some people just put mm-hmm. the armies they play in there right but everybody probably had people probably had plenty of other reasons too idk because it feels like it needs it a lot or slanesh because the book is terrible or uh you know whatever right pick your poison yeah you could you could go like tons of explanations and this is the problem with the battle tome treadmill right mm. is that everybody wants their book right away because they all quote unquote need it right and you're just on sure. that forever so there you go uh all right so one, let's go oh yeah yeah i was i was gonna say Vince. one guess i mean uh, i could see something that got a notable update through the Dawnbringers might be an early battle tome so, like, as we'll get into, I'm thinking the fifth Dawnbringers will be chaos related and slaves and corn. And sure. yes, yeah, so maybe maybe we might see a corn battle tome with with the updated models from the Dawnbringers book five, something like that. Um, but yeah, I think I think it's a very good point you made that you know it's going to be something that's not going to have a major expansion, refresh, whatever. Yep. So. And and again, this is why I would love the sort of GA book model plus expandopedias right mm. is because then everybody would start on equal footing everybody would have i mean theoretically. yeah i mean like so and then one you of still the get to do battle tone releases quote unquote you don't you don't do battle tone releases in it with expandopedia you're doing right? expandopedia releases right but yeah. so one of the challenges that i think with that is that you'll you'll no longer like books of lore dedicated to armies if you do that so like there's no, no that's what the, the expandopedias have lore in them that's your major story stuff that's the huge thing you're doing in there i understand that like the the progressing the narrative but i'm talking about why the what the gore tide is and wh- how is it different than the skull reavers and it's not because those don't exist in the main rules that's not a thing mean? i mean we're not using sub factions in my model those aren't things anymore tom you're playing well, corn there is a corn army in the book, and these are the rules to play corn. I hear that, but here's the challenge: is that you have like name characters like Corgus Cole and stuff like that, yeah, okay. um, that are like that are baked into the lore that are, or like in Stormcast, you have you have storm hosts, yeah, and like certain storm hosts have identity with certain named characters like yeah. Vandis or whoever else, sure, and like you you would just need to like write them out completely. No. Why would you write them out completely? Because. Um, unless you are like GW has leaned heavily into the design, like ghettoization design regarding um, named characters and wanting and, and pushing down this like world of sub factions. I think that I think that we are like to suggest that we're going to move away from that completely seems like a far stretch to me. I would imagine we still have sub factions, um, even if the sub factions are literally like a single ability, like they've been being written in the last, you know, the last handful of battle tomes. I mean, maybe I'm saying we don't need it. It's extra weight we don't need. If you if you go the, down my my model, like I think we have sub factions as a fluke of history. Not because they're in any way required for the army. Like it, it is a, it, it is, it is an organically, it is a thing that accidentally organically evolved. I understand because, that, but then how do you like because some factions are so tied into their sub faction identities? So taken. You point, mean some example, heroes Seraphine. are so tied into no, their sub faction? Seraphine. Okay. Like the two sub factions are like. The two identities of what those things are are like those aren't completely. You're saying that Starborn and uh, Coalesce are not and... sub factions. They are absolutely not. The sub factions are Coadle's Claw and 
so on. Those are the... Don't, uh, me. Those are sub-factions, Tom. Coalesced and Starborn are not that. There's some extra thing that they have. Okay? It just is. Like, I'm not pulling this out of nowhere here. They don't appear on a page and have a little logo and yeah, say, like, here's Starborn, here's your little rule. That's not what they are, and it's not how it works. They are an extra thing that's, that Seraphon has. And there's no well, reason that extra thing wouldn't still exist. Yeah, I don't know. I, like... Maybe. Maybe. Like, the... <laughs> The, the sort of named hero problem or any of that. Like, again, if you want to simplify it, let's simplify. Okay? Like, we could do this and actually make this an accessible game. Here's corn. Bam. It's these 20 pages. You want to play corn? Here it is. This is all you ever need in this chaos book. And then the corn expandopedia comes out. And it either, like, Corgus Call is just in there and he's just, he can be taken because he can just be taken in corn because there's no sub factions. So who cares? It doesn't matter that he's whatever he is. He's just there. He's just a thing you can take. Okay. Yeah, and then when, I don't the, know. when the Expandopedia comes out, you have the Gortide Army of Renown or whatever. And Corgus, I don't remember if Corgus Call is Gortide or whatever. I think he is, but I don't yeah, know. He is. He, and he has, like, War Scroll abilities that, that only affect Gortide units. Yeah, yeah. I understand that. Um, but obviously yeah. we're rewriting those things if we're doing the, the this model. Right, and what I'm suggesting is, is I think that that is way too heavy of a design. I don't think GW would take that task on on their, like, uh, in, their, in the updating of an edition. Maybe. I don't know, man. I don't think any of us sitting back in 1999 at the end of 5th edition thought what, that, that the world was going to look like what it did when 6th came out. Like, maybe the turkey doesn't yeah. think it's going to get its head cut off until Thanksgiving Day. Sure. And it's getting its head chopped sure. off. Like, I mean, like, there's no reason to believe that the past has to resemble the future. Or, the, sorry, the future has to resemble the past with, with, with what sure. GW writes. Right. So, there you go. Um, okay. At any rate, let's talk about new ancillary books. Tyler, I'm starting with you on this one. You've got to be quiet for a minute as Tom and I argued in classic, <laughs> classic Tom and Vince fashion. Uh, okay. Uh, new ancillary books, GHBs, narrative books, other books. We already talked about, I agree there'll be a Dawnbringers book five. It's a, clearly a yeah. five book arc we're not ending on Weesh. on on the dead guy <laughs> sure okay. well, we got to talk about what we think is going to be in there of course of course uh, but here's what i want to know tyler yeah yeah with the coming of fourth we will get a new ghb yep what do you want to see in that ghb tyler what's your hopes for that let's start there we're gonna have mm -hmm. one ghb for the year because they've they've committed to the yearly thing mm -hmm. what should be in that book tyler like there to be a multiplayer system. Uh, I think it would be really good for them to turn the GHB into a more expensive product that accounts right for a broader variety of, of interest. So multiplayer, like a Triumph and Treachery, some kind of system like that. Team format uh, in general would be a huge thing, I think, to actually have a a better fleshed out or, or just a real team tournament system. Yes. That preach would, brother. Would be amazing. <laughs> and Oh gosh. What else? I think we, I feel like it wasn't too bad last time around. I mean, maybe there's too much ancillary stuff at the moment. Maybe you could streamline that a little bit. Uh, I already mentioned the idea of a universal set of annual battle tactics. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, we have battle tactics that are associated with uh, battle plans. They really need to do a six-month release of six more battle plans, whether that's free or a digital purchase, however they do it, so that we end up with 18 battle plans for match play over the course of a year, right? 12 initially okay. and six at the halfway mark. I think that would the be amazing. The event expansion in December or something. Exactly. Yeah, the tournament. Yeah, the tournament. 100%. So, and they could do... Uh, you know, narrative events or narrative scenarios, narrative missions as part of that as well, right? Teams, 
uh, Triumph Treachery, etc. So, uh, yeah, a few things. Like, I think it's in a pretty good place. I'd be curious, Tom, to hear you. I'm trying to think back on, like, what have been some of your critiques. I, I think your, what I recall, like, your one of your main ones is just you felt that the GHBs have been too heavy-handed in how they've changed the environment, how they changed the ecosystem. It's like, okay, we're doing this wild swing for six months, right? And then we're doing another wild swing for the next six months. Something like that? Yeah, um, that they are, the design, the design is too heavy for the rest of the, um, like what I would what I would ultimately say is this, I think the GHB needs to be super vanilla. Uh, for the summer as we adapt to the new edition rules. Mm. Um, and so the G- the GHB needs to be a super light touch, a, a pitch down the middle for scenarios, um, and uh, and to let the system breathe, you know, especially if they're doing any wide sweeping changes before they begin oh God, to yeah. do, before yeah. they begin to do some like heavy design any glimpse of heavy design. Hopefully we never go back to what it's been the last, you know, year or so. So so really moving away from this seasonal model where, yeah, this season it's cavalry, this season it's troops. Like completely yep. move away from that. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me as well. My yeah. that would be my hope. Yeah. I cannot back that hard enough. Like Tom, you and I on this one are completely aligned. I mean, especially at the addition change. First of all, I've hated the heavy handedness of all of these GHPs where it's like entire swaths of units are like garbage, amazing, average, amazing again. It's just like, ah, oh, stop. Mm-hmm. Just I want to play an army. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, And like in my mind, number one is focus on the battle plans, right? Like for the single player side of the thing by the way tyler again completely back in you totally agree with mm-hmm. you completely have tnt in there have doubles and stuff like that in there and team stuff somebody right. said in the comments the recent white dwarf uh wait recent white dwarfs have had like multiplayer scenarios in them or something first of all i didn't know that i love multiplayer scenarios oh cool uh and that's amazing it must be really sad to write for white dwarf knowing that no one reads what you write like boy if you're just like like you're just, it's it's like the the psychology just throwing experiment. Throwing words words out into the nothingness. Yeah, exactly. It's like the psychology experiment where they have people copy down stuff, and then the, then the researcher just takes the piece of paper you write, folds it up, and throws it in the trash. But they'll pay you to keep writing it, and people just won't do that very long, right? Because it's incredibly psychologically defeating to watch someone just go like, "Thanks, trash. Thanks, <laughs> trash." Right? That that's kind of what I think it is at this point to write for White Dwarf. Um, so the, but, but like, but for the, 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 for the focused one-on-one player part of it, man, do they need to focus on just generating 12 good battle plans? Yeah. Right. Like just give us 12 good, interesting battle. You plans. know, the, the battle plans that you get on the, like, if you wanted to do like a summer GHB would be 12 good battle plans. And then in the battle scroll update or whatever, like halfway through the year, revisiting like six old battle plans from a prior ghb updated with with a new twist or whatever right like that seems to be the right the right approach and so then you like you're regularly recycling old but then you know like that are tried and true right but with a different twist or a different angle and that could actually be achieved very easily if you went and you added secondary objectives and so the core mechanics of the battle plan stay the same, but the secondaries all change when they get reintroduced. Sure. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, 100%. And yes, uh, I've got, we got some people, we've got some people standing up to defend white dwarf. Like I understand I'm being hyperbolic. <laughs> of course. I, I know some people do still read it. Um, but boy, it does has the readership on that dropped off. Like some people still buy DVDs too, but um, you know, the sales aren't what they once were. That's all I'm saying. Um, uh, I, I bought a new vehicle yesterday. Uh huh. Because you only got smashed because you were in a bad accident, but you were okay, yeah, thankfully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to mention that, but yes. So I bought a new vehicle yesterday, say and thanks, I appreciate that, and I'm okay. I was very, I was very worried for you when you sent me that text, and I was glad to hear you and everybody in the family was okay. It's a very yes. scary thing. It is. Um, but it, it's a new, newish vehicle, and it had a DVD player in it, and I was like, 
what is this? Like, <laughs> who added that on? Like, when they originally built this sure. vehicle, that are like, sure. you know what I want? I want technology yeah. from 30 years ago. Yeah, yeah, I get you. <laughs> I get you. Um, all right. So. It's wild. Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, so that's number one to me is the, is the battle plan focus. Number two to me is I, I, I like, yeah, we if we're not taking the big swings, let's say we're not like radically reinventing the meta with every GHB, which I don't think we should be by yeah. the by. Okay. What do we actually do with it then? Like, what is the season of events? Is it just the battle plans? Do we add any rules at all? Well, it used to have sections for open and narrative play. Right? Yeah, sure. Like, and I don't think we I've necessarily been... need those. Those have other methods of, of getting out there maybe but like what if like what if we had something that leaned back into something like variant of the play right like multiplayer what if yeah. what if it is something like this narrative ish whether it be like some variants of like regiment renown or you know something like that some element of multiplayer play and some uh, and then match play specific. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm with that. I'm saying what's going in the match play section? That's my question. Because we all agree it should be lighter, but then what is it doing? Like I'm asking us to put meat on this bone. So, yeah, I I'm, I might have a difference of it's probably have a difference between with you Tom like as far as being lighter. Yeah, I would, I would like that, but I personally I still enjoy the all right, here is your um, special spells for this season, right? Here is a special command ability. Like, I don't mind that. I, I think that can be done in a way that's interesting and and that will char be characterized as lighter. So, yeah. I fully like, agree with that. I fully agree okay. with that. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, I don't have a problem with that at all. We just don't need more horror for us or blizzards. <laughs> sure. Right? Like, magic like that's what we're... Yeah, uh, yeah, an extra magic dice and whatever, whatever, whatever. I, I played a game hunters, last weekend, by the way. Yeah, uh, I, I played a game this last weekend, and the first was it was turn three, or sorry, round three, before we got not turn round three, before we got a primal magic dice, because just nobody had the battalion, and so it was just like roll fail, 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 roll fail. It felt great statistically not that unlikely, right? It's certainly possible. It's just flipping a coin and having it end up heads four times in a row or whatever or something eight times yeah. in a row. And uh, I was like, oh, my God, this is the best game of Warhammer I've played in forever. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Sorry. Go ahead. Keep going. Yeah. So uh, we I don't know what that looks like exactly, but yeah, something that's a that's a lighter version of this. Something like the yes, I was thinking back to the original 2021 when I think that all this got started, which was, you know, OK, we're setting in Gur. We've got all these battle plans that are named for the setting of Gur, and but then we had some of these things that I remember were just was that was that 2021? I'm looking. Yeah, at yeah, it was with third edition. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And was that like what did we get exactly with that? Did, did we get the crazy we got monster? We got Monster Hunter, monster the season of monsters right out of the gate. That was the that was the initial. Thing. That's what that was. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, because it went like monsters, bounty hunters, Galatian champions magic crap because we should have only had three but we had four i think that's yep. right right yep yep i might be missing one in there but that sounds right to no me. I'll no you, you have it that, that's okay. what it is yep i think that's kind of it i mean i always on net you can't it. tell me that hasn't been negative no it's been bad no i'm saying i'm, I'm this is uh, tyler think about what yeah, i just yeah. said on net yeah. when i sum those up monster season right bad bounty hunter season bad galatian champion average and like and like at best i'll give primal magic an average so like this totally this is completely nets out negative yeah i <laughs> it's like okay what's the what's the goal here like this if you're talking about for tournament, it, it just runs into the debate we've always had, right? Like, who are your audiences here? If you're talking sure. about tournament tournament players who go quite a few tournaments or, you know, three, let's say three tournaments in a year, they may sure. not mind 
this level of change, right? Annual, that's that's an entire year. Okay, I can, but for those who, I, I have a lot of friends we've talked about before, you know, they're slow painters. It takes them, by the time they get an army painted, it's already a new season, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and the, so, so it does seem like there's this level of list changing um, that is, or yeah, you're having to restructure your list to account for the ground shifting mm -hmm. from under you too rapidly. That's yep. been going on. Like that seems to be at the heart of a lot of this, right? And that yeah, needs to 100%. slow down. Yes. So like, how do you how do you slow that down while still having some variety, some some seasoning? Literally, maybe you know, setting the season. Like, I think we're going to go to the realm of shadow. Okay, so we're going to get a GHB that's going to set in the realm of shadow. So how yeah, how do we do that in a way that is sufficiently generic universal but it doesn't like wildly impact lists sure i'll give i'll, well, I'll give you a couple options yeah would you like my couple options sure okay here's option number one option number one is you put in three simplified lightweight rules that are representative of the thing i will give you some examples let's assume we're mm -hmm. going to the realm of shadow i don't know that that's the case but let's just say we do okay yeah. In the matched play section, it says, here are three optional rules you can utilize as a TO or in your home games to represent play in the Realm of Shadows. Okay? Optional rule number one is like diminished sight. Okay? Mm -hmm. Any ranged attack that targets a target more than 18 inches away has negative one to hit. Okay? Any missile weapon attack. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Optional rule number two, uh, cloying shadows, okay? Here is a new heroic action. The hero can disappear into the shadows and teleport, so it's a heroic action teleport that everybody can access. Okay. Yep. Uh, optional rule number three is uh, ambush from darkness. Uh, you can choose one unit or two units or something like that, D3 units, I don't care, whatever. You get it. At the start of the game, and after they are set them up, after they are set up, remove them from the battlefield. Um, they may enter as an ambush unit, but they must enter from a board edge, be set up within six inches of the board edge, more than nine inches away from all enemies. Okay? So yep. there's three simple rules that all feel like shadowy rules, right? Mm -hmm. They are all three listed as optional, but the TO, but they're but they're simple enough that if the if a TO goes, we're gonna turn all these on, right? Okay, then they can, then they're they're playing completely in the realm of shadow, and they can use that, and and that's still going to have an effect because it gives people new options. It has some amount of weight, right? It's not crushing, but it's but it's there, like it's doing something, right? Yep. But it doesn't wildly change entire sweeping units of what's good or bad because it's kind of broadly applicable. Pull any unit off, teleport any hero, right? Penalize extreme ranged weapons, which aren't aren't that multitudinous anyways right mm -hmm. like that's to say over 18 inches whereas tos could just as easily go we're not using any of those we're just using the battle plans go nuts or you in your home game could go like because they've all been listed as three optional rules for your games you can just turn them all off just turn the light switch off and play the battle plans. Mm -hmm. that's a light touch and it puts the power back in the hands of the player while giving them structure and both a permission structure, yeah, both literal and figurative, to then engage with the season in the way they're comfortable with. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. I can hear the voices of some TOs in my head, <laughs> particularly including myself, uh, where there's a, there's desire out there for universal system. Of uh, that is when I go to. LVO when I go to Nashcon, right? Uh -huh. I'm playing. Uh -huh. I'm playing the same game, and I know you're not necessarily a fan of that. That's not. Nope. That's I, not your, in fact, not, your not that I'm not a fan. It's that I hate that like I hate <laughs> hell. Well, there will be some sub sub communities, right, within our that will reject that outright. Mm -hmm. Um, and like what I mean by that is, uh. You know, like folks like your your kind of your BCP like hyper competitive, <clears throat> they want uniformity. Um, and yeah. you're right, Tyler. Like that, like they're going to reject that that like piecemeal system outright. 
That's fine. They would yeah. have their uniformity because their uniformity would be the TOs at big events get together and say, we're just going to use all these. We're going to use the season. And all the big tournaments mm-hmm. probably just use all of the rules. That's just as uniform. But the mm-hmm. second we start catering everything in the game to an elite slice of tournament organizers and the big tournaments that they run, the game gets materially worse for everybody. That is mm-hmm. just a fact. Okay? Yep. Because those people, a very small minority of the overall player base, have a completely different set of needs. I'm not saying those needs shouldn't be served, because they should. They are an important player base. A high energy, very important player base. And the TOs are heroes. Okay? But they should not be the core at which around which the game is designed. They should be the option that the game can tilt into. And they're just going to have to put up with the fact that they're the extreme minority. Right? Yep. The game will still cater to them. But the game isn't built around them. It does. Well, I mean, while we're talking about it, I do wonder if you guys have an opinion on this. Like, how likely is it that fourth edition is going to go further down this road of uniformity within the broader tournament environment? Let's say. That's a good so, question. A lot of I I suspect it is going to increase with fourth edition for a number of reasons. I mean, like I think there's already some of this being impacted by the golden ticket. The world championships uh there's uh that, that's that's a longer i mean that's a show in itself that conversation but uh yeah anyway i i would personally bet that it's likely going to increase it for better or worse the, yeah no, I, 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 <laughs> I don't disagree I, I with you hear... the question is how heavy does that uniformity that's right, the question yeah. i'm just yeah. laughing because i've i've heard that uh guys from people at vault wars is becoming more recognized this year and like which is cool and I'll, I'll hear things, and the way people talk about it just makes me laugh. It's like, Vault, Vault Wars is that crazy tournament that does weird things like Highlander. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. <laughs> that's crazy? That's 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 now what passes for crazy and weird? Really? Right. Yeah, that's nothing. <laughs> that's nothing. Yeah. Like, uh, anyway, yeah. Yeah, that's that's like an extra award. That's right. nothing. <laughs> yeah. that's, you're, you're, you're a step away from nothing there. Right. And I don't mean any offense to you, like, because... No, of no, no, exactly. Is, yeah. No, exactly, yeah. yeah. It's not, yeah. Well, I would say that it's, a, like, it's, it's a great soft incentive for people to take non-traditional Right. Yep. Um, yeah. It, but, yeah, that's not hard incentives, right? Like, hard incentives are prohibiting certain war scrolls or doing things like that. Yes. Um, yeah. Or I would even I would even say things like uh, Nashcon's 2 list format is a hard incentive. Yeah. Oh, baked absolutely. Into the, baked into the, the structure of the event itself. All right. So we've talked the GHB to death. Let's keep going here. Yep. Okay. Um, What else? Is there anything else on any other books? I think we'll get the fifth Dawnbringers. I think that'll be the lead into fourth. I don't think we'll get any other narrative books in the year. There you go. Yeah. Um, oh, good. Okay. The only exception go. to that. Sorry. Go, ahead, Tyler. I'm going to guess Corn and you were yawning, so I'm going to jump in and interrupt you. Corn <laughs> uh, and I, I think it, we'll, we're going to see Corn. Uh, we may get a new Corgus Cole model uh, with him ascending, which I think would be amazing. And then hopefully a Valkia. Uh, what's the ugly ass model that we have right now? That is like, like Scylla something? No, oh, Scylla. Yeah, Scylla. I Scylla, don't know how to say yeah. Name, but yes. Yeah. Get an up- a horrific model. Get an update to him. Get an update to Valkia. Update. I think to you Corgus. just been that model. Sorry. <laughs> just for sure. And yeah, that that's and then you'll get the Dark Oath Riders, the update Marauder kits. I we'll see if Dark Oath Savagers are going to replace the Foot Marauders, or do we actually get a an updated you know generic yeah sure. Dark Oath. It'd right? be great to just again bend the bend the existing Marauders off and just call Dark Oath Savagers like those are Marauders now. There we yeah. go. <laughs> uh, fingers because crossed, they're like maybe... a million times better marauders. My God. Right. <laughs> maybe an actual full on, like if we get enough of this Dark Oath stuff uh, with this fifth Dawnbringers, a full on Iron Jaws style supplement. I'd love to see that. Like a Dark Oath supplement for oh, the sure. Slaves of Darkness. Battle sure. I think that'd be really cool. It'd be, it'd be a yeah, great all... Expandopedia army. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Just uh, saying. Anyway, yeah, just a, just a few thoughts on the what we right might see. All right. Um, oh. my my pushback, Vince, is this: if we go your new route of yeah. four core ravening hordes, yep. Um, 
and lean into these uh, Wahapedias, these Expandopedias, then um, I think that, that everything will be ancillary then from that point on. Um, and what I mean by that is that we move into, like, yes, okay, let's say we get four core Grand Alliance books that define the, the core faction. From that point on, I think we will move into one-year seasons with all lore books. Like, I say lore books. What I mean by that is this. Like, well, each year we would get a story, get trotted out over four to six books. Uh-huh. Um, and each of those are your Expandopedia with your regiment, your armies around and around around or whatever launched with each book man that sounds amazing let's do that that sounds so much better than what we're doing right now like that sounds a million times better than the current model and then you would get three narrative arcs per season i'm sorry were you saying this was a pushback on my position or or are you trying to reinforce the quality of my argument because if you're steel manning me you're doing a great job no you just simply said there will be no ancillary and my pushback is, is oh. I think that if we have your four core in the gotcha. new world, then everything is ancillary. From okay, that point. okay, okay. Like, cool. I think that we would get, we would get these, we would get these narrative arcs each year for each game, or like yeah. for each. Um, I'm with you. With you, know, you, with you for with each you. generalist handbook. Yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. Man, that'd be amazing. Okay, now I'm back on the page with you, and boy, yeah. you have described. A, I want to go to there. Okay. <laughs> How are we still doing this dumb model of of book releases from 1997? How have we not updated this? But what I'll say is this. If you do that model, then some of these expandopedias would have, like, whenever a new army, like, hypothetically, when Malarian's, you know, Umbreon or whatever drop, like, they would end up functionally being Battle Tome Umbreneth in one of the expandopedias as the whole new army drops. Yeah, yeah, and then like, they'll get they get the rolled into the next. Do, yeah, yeah, whenever the, the next edition launches, they get your new four books. They just fold themselves into the main book, right? Yeah. And then what happens when you have like line renewal, like Cities of Sigmar? Do basically one of the expandopedias end up basically being the updated battle tome for that thing? Like, yeah, so it yeah. ends up sitting in this weird space. I'm with you. Um, I'm if saying. they if they move to a different model. Yep, I got you. All right, new models and model ranges. Okay, uh, let's close out. This is the last main one I have, and then we have just another catch-all. Uh, okay. New models and model ranges. Well, we've already talked about everything at the beginning of the show that they spoiled, or that they, yeah. they said it's a little silhouettes of. So, Callus and Toll, potentially Night Haunt, and, um, and Lumineth Warcry Box, uh, new, as we said, potential marauder horseman that seems mm-hmm. to be odds on what all those silhouettes are right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um and if that's if we're not getting any and then you know book five the question is is that part of what the chaos people are from in which case that could open up hope for some additional chaos stuff it does seem like we're leading to a book five with a showdown with chaos in some way because we've got Corcus call messing around we've got all this stuff happening in the background Right. So it does feel like we're kind of sneaking around that, having those corn items in there. So are we going to say this is the year we get a new to match the new Stormcast? Do we get a new Corgus call this year as well? Like, does he does he technically come first? I don't think he ascends to be a demon prince, by the way. I don't know that that's his goal. I don't know that his goal is so lowly. I think he could have been a demon prince like 10 times over by now. Like he in the in the narrative, he's really going for something like unique Mm. uh like he basically was like i'm gonna kill this continent this living continent (laughs) as an offer to corn right um like he's trying to effectively chop down yggdrasil as like an offering Mm. to corn like that's what he's on about right um interesting and so you know like that's big (laughs) I, I think if I was going to do a new Corgus Cole, I would want to see him ascend to sort of uh, more like super mortal lord, basically. Like, like basically mm-hmm. the same, I think the same path Archeon's done, but just for corn, right? I yeah. don't know that he's he's trying to become a demon prince or something or a bloodthirster or lose his individuality. I'm not sure that's mm-hmm. his goal. 
Interesting. I think yeah, he just becomes be. a much bigger, scarier mortal lord with like an awesome mount. Right. Yeah, that could be a cool opportunity. Like uh. a big dog. Yeah, you sure. joke. <laughs> yeah, man. You joke, but no, I would love it if he was riding a big dog. Like, put him yeah. on a big three headed, oh, like, amazing. take Karnak, yeah. blow Karnak up, right? Like, big pig size. Yeah. Totally. And put a new Corgus call on top of it. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, Tom, I want that. That, w- that would work for my dog army. <laughs> yep. So. Maybe we we've been. Huh? I was, I was going to make a Karnak oh. joke. <laughs> uh, I have been seeing, feel like I've been seeing some Nurgle images in the advent calendar. Like they've got a couple of old S models, Epidemius, Festus. Maybe they make an appearance in this fifth book. I was kind of thinking about that. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Like we kind of get a refresh of the various and sundry chaos heroes. Is that what, yeah. you, is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And yes, as a couple of people have pointed out, yeah, our, our, well, our, I don't know how you pronounce his name, but yeah, Arbol, the undefeated. He was a guy back in Warhammer Fantasy in the old world who rode a, like a hellhound dog. He was on a big dog. Mm-hmm. But it was like a big dog for the time, so it was actually like a joke. It would have been smaller than than this model. Because <laughs> okay. it was just a tiny little thing. Uh, yeah, okay. I could see that. Uh, yeah. If we get new Skaven and mm-hmm. new Stormcast, we, you mentioned the culling and the thunder striking. Of Stormcast, yeah. Uh, um, is that is that like the extent, or like what else would like we want to chamber? Any, yeah, yeah. Does anybody want to or call it? Does anybody want to call a shot on a Warcry thing besides the potential Lumineth Night Haunt thing? Yeah, I think that after um, after uh, I'm gonna go big here um, Ooh, okay. and suggest that. The war cry box that we see isn't set in Gur. Okay. It's not? No. And that okay. rather the Lumineth. Um, I mean, mm, this, may, this may be too big of a swing, but it would be the Lumineth verse Night Haunt would actually be set in, um, in Ulgu. Okay. Being like light, light verse shadows, yeah. right? Yeah. Like light verse ghosts in the darkness, um, as the introduction to the new uh, Olgu setting, because I think that yeah. that's where we're headed. I think with the new edition, we're going to move to Olgu as the primary realm, and all the new Warcry stuff will map to that, just like it did with uh, Gur. Yeah. Okay. Because we talked now, about this, like a couple of years ago, guys, where it's right. We at least again the the historical pattern had been Underworlds unveils the new realm first, yeah, and then the edition launches and then Warcry adapts that new realm. Yep, and so and, like then that's why I was saying that it may be too early mm-hmm. for Warcry to jump to Olgu, but it would make sense to me for it to mm-hmm. be um, like Lightbringers, you know, or some form of yeah, yeah. of Haitian elves versus the shadows of the of death. Right, like the yep. darkness, the ghosts that dwell in darkness. Yeah. Um, well, that sets up your Eshenrat call, too. Really easy, yep. right? Right, right. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that would be super cool. I'm I'm down for that. And, you know, this, the Skaven have always been big in Ulgu. Um, they're big there. They're big in Japan. And, <laughs> uh, you know, so, like... I think that's fine. I think it opened the door. It o- would open the door to potentially a small uh, uh, additional Lumineth expansion, but it could also it could do open the door to like a Night Haunt expansion. It could open a lot of things up. Yeah. Right? Where you get the more like stealth focused versions of people who are messing around in Ulgu. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think you'll see Malarian or anything like his Umbraneth in 2024. Um, but no, as I've said, he's, I, I, he's your. He's your spring 2025 army. Okay. Like yeah, in that first year, in that mm-hmm. first year normally, as you're in, ending that first year, going into the next big summer, you always get an army drop in that April, May time frame. And yep. my yeah. money is if we're in Olgu, we'll get Malarian. Yep. And then the following year, we're going to get Tyrion. Is Tyrion will then respond once Malarian has shown us it. As, mm-hmm. a, as a Lumineth expansion. 
as an as Illuminati. And like Illuminati. whatever the narrative arc is at the end of yep. 4.0. That is yeah. that is exactly what's going to happen. Yep. Yeah, I mean the that looked like a river temple or what I would gather would be a river temple sure. model the one that was previewed today and it almost looked yep. like some kind of water dragon uh icon that I felt like at least that's where my brain was going to. Maybe. In that in that photo, yeah, which you know, which would that. would which would lean into the Eastern influences that we've seen, right? Yeah, like sure. that's that's a very common like that is an association with water. Mm. Mm. Yep, hundred percent. Speaking okay. of, Ideneth is overdue for an expansion again. I uh, twenty twenty four would be my guess at some point. IDK uh, getting expanded. Would love to see a little more like. You know, Lovecraftian in in Ideneth, uh, which could potentially tie in. I mean, might be stretching at this point, really. Hammering no, I hear you. This, I think they're a great which... candidate for a Warcry expansion force. Yeah, It'd be interesting. I I want to see I want to see seahorse riders, but sure. we're not going to mm. go that direction. We will likely go the like squid, dw- like again, dweller in darkness direction mm-hmm. for for Ideneth. Like if I'm guessing. They will go to more like the the horrors of the deep, which is what we need. With I think really with this army, yeah, like that's un under tapped right now. Yeah, man. Yeah, yes, and especially if we're going to do that, would make sense as well. Yep. Yep. Like that. Yeah, I, I um, agree. Can I, can I ask a question? Go for it. Can I make a big swing? Yeah, that's mm-hmm. what we want. Let's take some big swings. <laughs> Do you all think we'll still see endless spells moving forward? Oh, will they get jettisoned out? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, like in the new it's a great question. Uh, hopium, they would be jettisoned. I would call I know, it 50-50 I know they survive. I, know, I would, I know I would love to see them rocketed out of the game and never return. <laughs> yes, I know you feel that way. The reason why is that it's actually like if you go scroll the website, most of them are out of stock. They don't. Sure. Well, I was like they, they, they the cannot keep them. Yeah, they cannot keep them in stock at all. But they actually um, they are trying to sell them. It's just they don't have them in stock. They're they're still. Well, I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Here. But like, but like, can you even get the original like malign portents or anything like that? I didn't think malign sorcerer is even available anymore. Let me look. Uh. My sorcery, uh, ye- online only. Yeah, you can still buy it. Right, but online only, that does not yeah. vote at all, right? Like, um, yeah, I don't know. Like, it just makes me wonder. Um, the trajectory of where we're going, right? Um, uh, like, can you, what about the other ones? Like, the, the, the second, the second. The, by the way, the real reason I think you did, they would jettison them. You want my real business answer? Not just because, like, what yeah. Vince wants or stuff like that? Yeah. I think they're bad for the game. That's number one. But that I don't think they would... Sure. I don't think that's going to stop sure. me either way. I think the actual problem is they're produced in China. They're not made at the factory in the UK. And that supply chain has gotten very fragile over the past right. two years, three years. And so, like, if they were going to make a decision to... Like, if they were going to make a business decision to shore up supply chains... Right and and reduce risk, jettisoning yeah. endless spells would be one way they could do that. Uh, what was the other ho- the other release? Of, not Malachi, but uh, for, oh, forbidden, forbidden, forbidden Power. Yeah, yeah, Forbidden Power. That was the other one. Which, by the way, as an aside, how hilarious! You can't like even in Forbidden Power. You, yes, there are those four endless spells, but there used to be a terrain piece in there that is just disappeared into the ether <laughs> sure sure yeah i was trying to think guys when was the last time we got an endless spell release uh tied to a faction it's been quite some time if if i recall uh like they have not been releasing these things uh, maybe it was daughters of cain but that was no i mean if it was daughter of cain it was that's it was, been a long time it was some time ago yeah i'm looking through the battle terms and i'm not seeing anything with endless spells, endless spell releases, like OCR, no. I mean, they had the old in the first edition OCR book. Uh, yeah, twenty twenty three. I'm not seeing anything that had endless spells, which is you might be right, Tom. Yeah, that's, uh, that's one can game. hope. I mean, yeah, like I just it doesn't feel like a thing that needs to be there. 
Uh, by the way, I wouldn't even care if they kept the army on the spells and just jettisoned the generics. Hmm. And it would just be kind of became like like that. That that's fine. That wouldn't solve the the supply problem I'm talking about. Uh, yeah. Kyle Nelson said, "Why are those produced in China? And how does Vince know that? I know that because that's what I do. I'm here because I know things." Um, but secondly, uh, the why are they produced there? Because they're cheaper, lower quality models that they don't care about the casting on as much. Because endless spells have a much lower casting quality requirement than uh, their actual models, and so the same was true for most of the terrain that gets produced. They, that is to say, they don't have as fine a detail requirements or things like that, so they can just be kind of more easily mass produced in the factories that that China can pump those things out with. Um, whereas with their mainline models, the the actual casting and production requirements are like really really high. Like it it's actually requires extremely expensive machines to manufacture the kinds of models that GW does. Most most mm. people in the world just do not have machines capable of either doing the initial cast of them nor of producing the actual models. It actually takes very expensive machines on both sides um, and very, very highly paid people to, to do all of that work. So, mm -hmm. Whereas yeah. the terrain and, and endless spells are like such simpler goofball models that it's like, like look at the look at the burning head. That's you know, I mean, come on now. It's just not hard to make something like that. It's play doh. Yeah. I highly doubt they're gonna get rid of them. Personally, I like them. Uh they yeah, I like what they add to the game. It's taken them forever. It's taken them way too long to get them to a reasonable place. We I think we finally have gotten there. Not all of them are great. None of them are particularly out of bounds. Uh, you know, like Geminids is fine. The, the ones that you see are generally fine. Uh, pendulum is fine for the you know anyway I, I like what they do for list building what they do for gameplay but it it took forever to get them to the point that they're in now where they're at least in a decent place yeah, but, yeah. i just wonder like it would just it just dawned on me like as i've looked at like adding new armies like yeah. when i go to buy an army i like i want to buy the ancillary thing for any pieces i want to buy the the endless spells and one of the things that i found is that like just locating endless spell kits is really difficult Mm. Like it's like it's legitimately difficult, and mm. so it just raises questions when I think about like new players wanting to join the game, and yeah, and sure. So when I think about the trajectory of where we're going, like it just makes me yeah. wonder, like, are these things going the way of the the dodo? Yeah, it's good. It's a good question. Absolutely. Yeah. Um. Uh, hey, Chang said GW is that high end. I'm kind of surprised. So are GW models reasonably priced? Uh, that I have no answer to. GW models are certainly, um, you know, costly, um, but there's a lot more factored into that price than the weight of the plastic, right? Like there, there's a lot going in. I will tell you that uh, that casting a model like they do, okay, uh, like getting a new kit, like they're gonna make a new Space Marine kit, is probably easily a. Like fifty thousand dollar at the low end, a hundred thousand, hundred twenty five thousand dollar at the high end. Yeah, I, uh, I heard. I've heard journey. seventy five to to hundred ish. Yeah. Yeah, it depends on the size of the kit and what's mm -hmm. going on and how much complexity there is and what size sprue does it use, right? Like, is it using a tank sprue, which is like the big one, or is it using the half sprue, right? Those all have different names, yep. or the quarter sprue. Okay, each one of those mm -hmm. has different cost bases to it, but the the level of like <clears throat> the machine used to actually cast that thing out. Is, is very very those those things are crazy expensive mm. um but then you also have to the, the entire process like i'm talking about from from what you're paying the artist to concept it out to when you the first models roll off so anyways it's you know it's an expensive process and so they they you know they cost out from there uh, are they reasonably priced i mean i don't know man that's <laughs> that's that's all i is anything that under the current model of the world reasonably priced given their desire to deliver shareholder value that I can't justify, but, um, I so will can say I ask a question. It is an expensive process. Yeah, go ahead. When, what was the last, uh, army terrain piece that was introduced into the game? It was oh, the, the last Ogre... army terrain. Ogre boy, oh boy. It's a long time ago. Ogre no, Montrex. that's not, no, it was like five minutes ago. Uh, sorry, that's a total lie. Five minutes ago, uh, the the mall pit, the mall yeah. pit, the mall yeah. pit as a variant, yeah, of the original. Uh, yeah, I forgot about that. Uh, Before that, it had been quite a pit. while, but yes, the mall pit. Yeah, but again, that's more of a variant than it is an actual like new terrain addition. 
Sure. Yeah, it had been some time beyond that. Yeah, I'm not like sure. Like technically we did get we did get the uh, also in Warcry. You're alluding to a Warcry. Oh, sure. Events. Also in Warcry we got the variant Seraphon um right. the realm shaper, the other realm shaper. Yeah, um, I suppose, but that didn't actually have different rules. The Maw Pit no, was like a legitimately but, different model. Like because I, I, it actually had completely that. different rules. Yep. Yep. But again, like when you're looking at actual new models, Right. It's a, a super fascinating, um, like they just simply in the last three years, they haven't really added almost any regarding yeah. terrain. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. agreed. Which I mean, so it, part of that might be just they're happy with the the, ter- the armies that have terrain versus the armies that don't. So there's no need to add more, yep. right? Yep. And part of that could be, yeah, it's a thing they don't want to invest. They don't want to throw more money in that. Like they're already, they don't want to have to have rely on China to produce any more stuff since again that's where the yeah. the army train comes from China right yeah so yeah one okay. general thought or question I had is to what degree are we going to see a greater amount of narrative or thematic coherence in their releases especially in 2025 you know for fourth edition when you get into the guts of new releases expansions etc I feel like there's been very little. <laughs> thematic or narrative coherence with third edition's releases uh you know like we've got cities of sigmar at the tail end of it even though the narrative was supposed to be about this dombringer crusade yeah, yeah, you know, sure. that city of sigmar mm-hmm. right would have come out at the near the start of it uh yeah so uh, like i, I yeah, mean I, my answer is i think they will absolutely uh do such a thing like, I think their goal is and has always been to better align the books to the larger narrative moves to everything and, and have that kind of progression. And I think yeah. you see that happening now that they're sort of back on plan with Dawnbringer's Book 4 and FEC and the alignment there and that kind of stuff. So right. in my mind, that's where they want to be. They know that if they, like, tell a story and draw people in and, like, they've seen the power of lore. No one should know. Mm-hmm. No one knows better than than GW that lore can actually, like, move the needle on sales. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, 40K is like that writ large. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I think that's certainly in their minds that they want to align and drive toward that unified image. These sort of unified releases. I just think it's right. really hard to do. And then, then the pandemic happened and threw them way off. And so like, yeah. again, somehow we're going to get nine years into this game before we actually have the real game, which is crazy <laughs> sure. to say. All right. Right, but that's almost true. I mean, we should probably mention the two obvious ones that could use a refresh, seemingly, which would be Base of Chaos and, yeah. at least in my mind, Ogres. Uh, stand yeah. out as one. I mean, there's yeah, some real old kits there. Any thoughts, guys, on when we might see those? I think Ogres, they'll just handle through continued, like, Warcry and Ancillary game releases because yeah. they can. Most of what they need isn't huge. Like, the Beast Riders are fine. The main ogres are probably fine for a while still. Like but they gluttons. have, yeah, like gluttons and stuff. Um, but the butcher is terrible. The slaughter master is terrible. Those two models are, I mean, really, really, really uh, bad. Yeah, the yetis. Y- yeah, exactly. Uh, but but all that stuff could easily like that's a that's a new hero at a book release. That's mm-hmm. a war cry. That's an underworld's model. Right, like you get a the Underworld's War Band. Oh, it's three Yetis and a and a Hunter. It's yeah. like, oh well, okay, solved a bunch of problems there, didn't we? Or, or whatever, you know. Right. right. Yeah. Um. So, like, you could imagine that kind of thing, right? Yeah. So. And Beast of Chaos. I think we're very likely. Beast. I think they have to get a complete line refresh. I think it has yeah. to be, and that's why I don't see it happening in twenty twenty four. Does yeah. it need to be done? Yes. Will it happen in fourth in in four point oh? Oof, I'd give that a 50-50 at best. Could mm. they kill the line? No. I no. don't think so. No. I would rate that as like a 0% chance. Yeah. No. We've we've seen some model new models. Yeah. Beasts are such an such a part of this game. Yeah. Um they have been for a long time. They like have a pretty significant player base of people who like them and engage yeah. with them. And importantly, they have a lot of fans at GW. There are a lot of beast beastmen, beast of chaos players, or everyone say at GW. So in general, 
whenever a bunch of people in the headquarters actually play the army, mm, it doesn't go away. <laughs> like, sorry, but that's what it is, right? I mean, look, you know, if you like... Beast if of you, chaos, the Bretonians of AOS. Yeah, like, <laughs> they're just going to hang out, man. Um and and yeah, I mean, there's also exactly there's there's as as uh, Beefy Crunch just pointed out, um, they'll they'll potentially get updated through Old World as well because they actually will be one of the ones that probably um, remains pretty stable in both. So because yeah, they not? actually are like, a full crossover, and and ogres are the yeah. same as well. Like they could update ogres in uh, in Old World. Yeah, do you guys think it's a lock that we're going to see that we're going to see Old World updates that then translate to AOS that portal sure. to AOS? Sure. I mean, yeah. define what you mean there. Well, so that is a box of uh, models from packaged with the old for world old packaging world. Yep. For, for the old world. Comes out, right? And it has a war scroll or war scrolls for AOS. No, I do not think you'll see that. Mm. Like, I, and that's it. That's so wild to think that they wouldn't capitalize on that obvious synergy but no i don't think they want to muddy the waters or mix their games plus it's two mm. rival studios these are effectively competitive operations within the same company now they're both competing for dollars they're not going to make models for the other games now do i think that they'll make new gore for or something okay yeah. or whatever i'm just i'm just saying that as, as an example right yeah. for the old world and then people who play aos where there is also a unit called gore right, right right will go buy that kit to use those things sure. yes yes that will happen yeah. right um yeah just like you will see people uh put a zombie dragon on the table that looks like the tomb king's mummy dragon yeah, sure sure yeah, 100%. because yeah. the zombie dragon kit is not available right now from sure oh. that's a good call talk about a kit that needs updated at least in my opinion that, that zombie dragon but, terror guys but yeah but i mean but that's the point like it's yeah. like the, it goes back to what i had said like you can't buy these things from gw right now sure, sure. what what are you going to do like how are you going to yeah yeah um, we, we will see that I'd be shocked if we see Chaos Door. I mean, like, are we going to see Chaos Dwarves finally at some no. point in fourth edition? No, not in no. fourth. I don't. I, I, I don't think we do. I think. I think it'll be like the tail end if we do. I think. I think it's later. pure hopium. I don't, I yeah. don't think I, the hor the horns of hashit are not popular. Like, yeah, but that was here's, a human here's the reality. Action. I understand that. I understand that. Uh, like, I, you're just not. I I don't think that you see it short of something like a armies of renown regiment situation right mm -hmm. like you may you may see that you may see a box come out right that is a bunch of units all together that um that serve as a unit that can be imported into an army but here's the deal um that just does not like we have i'll say it this way we have reached a like a stasis point in aos with as yeah. many armies as we have. They got to be like, really careful not... about putting out new armies. They can't put out four armies in an addition or something like that. Yeah. It's crazy. Right, right. Yeah. You're lucky to see one new, full new army per edition. Okay. And even with that, you're going to begin to see some armies cycled out as new ones are brought in. Yep. Like, they, 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 they are going to need to very carefully control adding new, new armies into the ecosystem. Right. And so when I say things like, do you think Beasts of Chaos could cycle out? What I'm also asking there is, is with them adding Malarian's Umbraneth or whatever, like yeah. they will need to look at at cycling things out or cutting from their line. I think you can see, you so, can you can put one or two more in and not break the system. And so, like just adding Umbraneth, probably fine. Expanding LRL with your Tyrion, that's because that's still just LRL as a bigger yep. army now is mm, fine. Yep. Right. <clears throat> yep. But if you I get up to like this. when when you cross the threshold of like. If you're getting up toward 30, there's going to be a problem. Yep. I went and looked then. I was curious what 40K is rocking. So yeah. at least based on the website, uh, Armies of the Imperium, it's, uh, you know, Xenos Armies, Armies of Chaos. That's, all of that's 20. And then you've got the Space Marines category, right? Which however sure. the hell you want to think about that. 
uh, but yeah, no, that yeah, that seems about right. Thirty, yeah, right. that starts to get scary. Like, I could see us get an number enough. I could see us get um, an expansion to LRL as like another sub faction. Maybe I could see us with another uh, destruction faction because they're still so light compared to yeah, the other yeah. Grand Alliances. Sure. Yeah. Right. Um, but beyond that, like I think we're about done. And until you begin trimming or collapsing other uh, other uh, factions, mm. yeah. Some people have said they think Umberneth or or Malarian's forces would just be part of Doc, and I don't know they could do they like they could yeah, do a combined a book where where that yeah. happens. In general, they've made it so like the gods have their own armies. You don't generally have a singular book that has two different gods in it because this is epic fantasy and it's very top down. And so like Malarian is his own god with his own troops and so he'd have his own book all the different orcs are all still they're different orcs but they're all still under the same gork and morg right yep and i mean i'm just that's traditionally been the way that they think about the game Mm -hmm. and so like now i I realize i said that while i at the same time i just said Tyrion and uh teclas having a, a unified book but my impression of them is it it is the exception because they're so tightly bound together they whereas, are twins. Yes, the twins. So you get <laughs> they where, whereas, are twins. Yes, where, yeah. whereas at the same time, I mean, I understand Malarian and uh, uh, Marathi Our are related. Daughter. Yes, <laughs> yes. Our mo- mother son. Mother yes. son. Yeah, I understand that they're also related. Um, so they could. I mean, I I hadn't thought about it. I thought about them as student things. But yeah, I, they they could do one large army. The problem is it would have to change. They wouldn't all be the daughters of Cain. They would be something else. Right. Right. They would be like the Shadowkin or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Like whatever. They'd have to, they'd have to get a new name because, like Malarian's troops, we have no reason to believe the, uh, that Malarian's troops have any care about Cain. That's not their bag. That's not what their world is. They worship him. He's a full-fledged mm-hmm. god, right? Yeah. He was from the beginning. Um, but yeah, <laughs> mother, son, and more. Yeah, you ain't wrong, Cygnus. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, anyways, so, uh, look, there we go. We'll we'll see. I guess. All right. Let's yeah. uh, let's close this out. Any other final hopes and dreams to end this out for the year? Anything else for 2024 you want to see outside of just product ranges or whatever? Anything else you want to see? We got yeah, we got models. a quick quick go around here. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I I would not be shocked if they update or if they try to do a revamp of Path to Glory, uh, a revamped, updated narrative system okay. for fourth edition launch, uh, where they release a standalone book with that new narrative system whatever it's called i suspect it may not be called path to glory going forward i don't sure. know just kind of I, I it's still feel like there's some real work like the crusade equivalent from 40 guy you mean uh, uh, oh yeah 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 they did do that with yeah crusades exactly yeah they had a crusades yes more or less that yep uh that that would be one thing uh somebody at marbles when will fire slayers be squatted that's just rude <laughs> I was actually so that was going to be one of somebody just uh, took one of that was potentially going to be one of my um, my big swings yeah. uh, was if this is going to truly be a, re, a ravening hordes. ravening hordes is when you when you redraw faction lines and when you write factions mm. out like that's like that's when you do that thing um, is when you're doing a, a big sweeping change like that. and if that's the case. Uh, the two that that looked uh, uh, most tenuous to me would be Fire Slayers and Beasts of Chaos. Yeah, like I hate to say that, like Fire Slayers at this point could simply be a regiment of renown. <laughs> oh man, yeah. The I mean, that, I'm I'm still full on hopium after seeing that Vulcan, whatever the the box, the Warcry box, like. I hope that they're sitting on a bunch of new Fire Slayer models, and at some point in 2025, we're going to get a, you know, Fire Slayer's done right. Yeah, I mean, look, as the known Fire Slayer hater on this show, okay, (laughs) I would put that at a 0% chance. They're not going to kill their their new AOS faction. 
Could it be combined in one big dwarf book? Yeah, maybe. Like, I don't know. That's always, there's always a chance. You never know how they're going to think about that design, right? But yeah. are they getting rid of Fire Slayers? No, man. I don't, not for a minute do I think that's going to happen. I really don't. And so, like, I just, I, Cygnus, you knew what you were getting into when you made a 2,000 point Swift Talk agent army. If you didn't know, you were, you were riding the lightning on that one. Come on, buddy. That's a different story. Okay. You were like, I'm going to play army mailmen full of these hyper specific units from the old world. You knew what was happening there. Uh, and arrested at Wolf House saying like, no soup like dwarf soup. Yeah, that's a good point. But, yeah, I mean, I just, I don't think for a minute that uh, that we're gonna see like fire slayers go. That's that's crazy mm -hmm. talk. Well, I would like I what I would say is this: it would not surprise me if they go the route of savage orcs. And what I mean by that is that we simply like they don't get you know squatted, they don't get fridged, but they they just don't get touched. Like I could see that happening for the because they're just such a small representation. Sure, they get updated in a book. They have a line item, but they yeah. as a line as an IP are dead. I don't know, man. That's a that's that's a probably not for me. But we'll see. What other hopes and dreams do you have, Tom? What do you got? I'm still waiting for my new uh, over, uh, my new sub faction fire eaters yeah sure <laughs> i mean i'll tell you right now we already know what my hopes and dreams are we've talked about it like five times in the show it's just please give me the new skaven range i want just please can i have it now all right it's all i want uh oh, we, we haven't said a whole lot about what like what more what do you think you're gonna get so do you think it's gonna be eshin like thompson like, i think it's gonna be a most line refresh with a lot of culling okay yeah like that is to and say You'll and get heavy eshin. Well, the, the box would be heavy eshin, but you'll get a launch at the same time. Like, yes, correct. <laughs> like, so it will be like what they did with Necrons in Ninth, is what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. So you'll cut a bunch of stuff and call it out of the line. Like, a bunch of things will be called. Okay. Yeah. Weapon teams. Um, what's that? Weapon teams. Potentially. I mean, at the minimum, some of them are going away. Right. Like the, um, what's his name? The the doom grinder or whatever the warp grinder that guy's gone you know the little the little i mean the little, little bicycle like, rider i love that guy the spy, i love the bicycle rider <laughs> spiky guy too but like whatever you you get it pick the, yeah. you know there's gonna be like 10 to 12 kits that are retired just gone from the line okay you'll yeah. get mostly refreshed outside of the new plastics like the vermin lords will stay and be what they are the storm fiends will stay oh. and be what they are yeah. and Stuff like that. Potentially, they'd keep the bell. It would fit like I think when they redid the the Necrons, like the scythe, the big, yeah, the big yeah. croissant, like the flying right. croissant, stayed, right? right. Okay, yeah. but they did make a new pyramid, I think. Yeah, um, a new monolith yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um. So I think it could be the same thing there, where it's like potentially the bell stays. It's not like a horrible plastic kit. It's not the bell, great. the bell, and uh, and or sensor. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because it's like a double kit, and you know, could you redesign it and make it awesome? Yeah, I mean, you could do amazing things with it. Do you have to redesign it? No, it's it's still plastic. It's still serviceable, right? Sure. But like clan rat redesign storm vermin redesign plague monk redesign plague sensor bearer redesign all the mainline stuff rat ogre redesign most yeah. of the heroes that are still riding on ancient plastic so like or and or metals or fine casts so like plague priests master molders because they're going to keep this the, the we have a new death master already so that guy's good to go mm -hmm. he's locked in right because yeah. um, we got that update already but basically all of that stuff and so on and so forth new you know, like, and, and by the way, either like new Giselle or better kill Giselle's fine, make better new, interesting artillery, right? Like right. kill the doom wheel. I love the doom wheel. Okay. Uh, but like kill the doom wheel and give me a new, crazier, bigger, wilder weapon like it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like the doom wheels retired. Doom 
but now we have like the wizard you know it's just like and it's like four wheels all spinning around the wizard you get it um the grinder yeah like the the point being is that you know give me spiritual sequels um Mm -hmm. to those previous things that are their that are their new stuff but like all the core units will stay and just get redesigned that's what i would see for the the range refresh okay interesting so yeah there you go an annihilation whirly gig thank you cygnus maximus (laughs) absolutely the annihilation whirly gig yes uh varnak said which skaven theme do we think they'll dig into first i agree it'll be eshin to go in the launch box like you you were exact i think you're absolutely right tom because it's like that just is an easy launch filling up filling a launch box with ninja rats is just like the coolest thing you can do to sell a box <laughs> right mm-hmm. and plus it's a very funny opponent for stormcast right you can picture the trailer them like lightning striking down and fighting some some uh some clan rats or whatever and then just like whoosh, out of the shadows just mm-hmm. like whoosh, whoosh, little little warp tipped throwing stars little green throwing stars are coming out of the shadows and just like pinging and you're seeing like lightning blasts go up right mm-hmm. that kind of thing yeah easy okay. yeah okay cool good stuff uh, there you go all right well what are your hopes and dreams out there audience hey drop it down in the comments and if you haven't hit like yet please do so uh for this probably show that it was much longer than i thought it was going to be but we had a lot to talk about uh, that's all right. Hey, everybody, this is our last show of 2023. So I just want to say thank you so much for everything you've done in the show this year. Liking, subscribing, watching the show, those who buy the merch down below, support us on Patreon, buy the books that Uncle Adam and I produce, all that kind of stuff. Do check it out. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, everything's down there. And uh, so check those out. Hit those things. Make dings. It's fun. You'll be cool. You will get at least some percentage cooler. All your friends will think so and uh we certainly will think so uh but yes thank you very much tyler tom thank you both for everything this year absolute pleasure to uh close out 2023 with both of you an honor uh and a blessing and a pleasure as always i got we got to go but i gotta go back and add it up tom see who had the highest tally of appearances and uh, you, you had a strong showing at the tail end of this year you may, did you may yeah have- I've had may, like nine in the last ten shows or something yeah. ridiculous. You may you may have pipped me. <laughs> Seven in the last nine. Got him at the last minute there. He brought it home. All right. Got him. Yep. But thank you, everybody. We really appreciate it. And uh, as always, we'll see you next Wednesday. <laughs>